Jadi bagian sebuah bangsa yang besar tidak membuat kami berpangku tangan begitu saja. Mengesampingkan kepentingan pribadi, memilih menjadi seorang berprofesi luhur. Berperan aktif, selalu peduli, dan berhati jujur. Sederhana tersenyum, memberikan salam, meniadakan perbedaan. Bereksperimen untuk mencoba hal baru yang jarang membuahkan hasil, tidak mematahkan semangat kami untuk tetap melakukan yang terbaik. Menumbuhkan rasa kemandirian agar tidak bergantung pada hal lain. Siap bersaing, berjuang maksimal, mengenalkan siapa kita sebenarnya. Hari ini, mungkin kami masih berjuang membekali diri dengan ilmu. Agar nanti, Kami siap untuk membanggakan. Okay, to all webinar participants, before the event start, we appeal to you all to maintain order during the webinar. The first, all Zoom participants should use the real name as a written in registration form. The second, all participants should wear neat and polite clothes and sit properly. Third, all Zoom participants are requested to enable the video and mute the microphone during the webinar. The fourth, for those or do not obey the rules, the committee will give warning tea time. If those participants still do not obey the rules, after being remanded tea time, those participants will be removed from Zoom. Fifth, all participants in Zoom and YouTube live streaming are requested to fill pre-registration form and the attendant link shared by the committee at the beginning of the webinar. The fifth, on discussion session, the participant can give questions shared by committee. Plus, all participants should fill out the evaluation form at the end of this webinar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Swastiastu, peace for all of us. The Honorable Head of DPD PPN Kabupaten Banyumas, Mrs. Fajar Triasi, Eskapnas MM. The, di the distinguished advisor of Pendidikan Wipuspita Foundation, Mr. Fadi, Fa Mi sorry, Mr. Yadi Fahruzen Terangjaya, MM, and the staff. The second, chairperson of Pendidikan Wipuspita Foundation, Mr. Ii Setiawan Mangkun Negara, Eskom, MTI, and the staff. The third, rector of Harapan Bangsa University, Mrs. Dr. Pramsti Dewi, MKS, and the staff. The fourth, dean of School of Nursing of Manila Central University, Mr. Malvin. 
the fifth dean of health faculty mrs dwi novita sari eskepnes msc and the staff six chairperson of harapan bangsa university and all respectable participants well ladies and gentlemen all the praise and thanks to our god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us blessing and guidance so that we can meet together in this opportunity in international webinar entitled nursing care for adult patient with chronic illnesses in new normal held by diploma and undergraduate of nursing study program of health faculty universitas of harapan bangsa ladies and gentlemen i would like to say thank you all to all speaker and invited guests who are willing to attend this webinar and i would also like to say welcome to all participants who join this webinar eagerly well before starting the webinar let me introduce myself i am refa tejamuti as a moderator that will lead this webinar the honorable ladies and gentlemen now i would like read to random agenda of this webinar first is opening second uh, singing national anthem the third opening remake from rector of harapan bangsa university the fourth speech from dean of school of nursing of manila central university mr malvin merna rnmnn the fifth welcome speech from the head of dpd ppni kabupaten banyumas the sixth the speaker presentation and discussion the seven some information related with harapan bangsa university and the next be followed by the quiz and the last closing well ladies and gentlemen to start this webinar let's let's for a moment back for a gratitude toward our god for those who are non muslim please use the praying method according to your religion and belief for those who are muslim let's say basmala together Bismillah. Okay, for the second agenda, let us sing the national anthem of the Philippines, Thailand, and Indonesia. To all Zoom participants, I'll request it to enable the video and stand upright. All participants, please stand up.
All participants, please be seated. Yeah, Pak. Okay, Pak. the third agenda is opening yeah. remark from the Vice Rector of Harapan Bangsa University, Mrs. Nurse Murniati M. Kep, and the official opening of this webinar, Mrs. Nurse Murniati M. Kep. Hello, Miss Nurse Murniati. Hello, Mr. Reva. Okay, Nurse Murniati, Mrs. Nurse Murniati M. Kep. Time is yours. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Honorable Mr. Melvin Miranda, RNMAN, Dean College of Nursing, Manila Central University. Dr. Tani Glomjai, RNMS and PhD, Director of Burumarajanani College of Nursing, Payao, Thailand. And also one of our speakers today. Good morning. Uh, the Honorable Head of DPDPPN Ibanyumas, Ibu Fajar Triasih, Eskep Nurse MM. Counselor of Pendidikan Dwi Puspita, Bapak Yadi Fahruzin Terangjaya, SEMM. Head of Pendidikan Dwi Puspita Foundation, Mr. Iis Tiawan, MN, Eskom, MTI. Dr. Pramesh Dewi, Rektor Harapan Bangsa University and the staff. Chairperson of Harapan Bangsa University, all speakers, Ibu Dwi Novita Sari Eskepner MSC, Mr. Madis Wandika, MKP RN PhD, and also Mr. Michael John V. Flores RN PhD from Manila Central University. And also, last but not least, for all webinar participants from Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, uh, and also from India, Taiwan, and everything. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Praise and gratitude are to Allah the Almighty for the blessing and the guidance so that we can join into this international webinar entitled Nursing Care for Adult Patients with Chronic Illness in the New Normal which in collaboration with Indonesian National Nurse Association that is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen whom we respect, since the first case of COVID-19 was found in Indonesia in March, government appealed to all people to apply clean and healthy behavior in order to prevent and to stop the spread of the virus. Looking back at the history, clean and healthy life behavior has been announced since long time ago, but it hasn't been fully implemented even many people still ignore it. Hand washing was forgotten, wearing masks became something weird, and also the proper way to sneezing and coughing was also forgotten. This behavior was normal at that time. However, now it is changes. People move rapidly and change those normal uh, behavior to cope this pandemic. Not only in Indonesia, I think, but also all people in the world conduct the protocol of uh, COVID-19 pre pre uh, preventions. All parties without uh, exceptions are encouraged to do clean and healthy life behavior. Previously, the ignorance of behaviors was normal, but now it is a must. This is the new normal, uh, the new pattern of life in the middle of pandemic. So the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is held as the media to inform the nursing services on patients with chronic illness in new normal era, and also as the form of cooperation between Harapan Bangsa University and foreign stakeholders. UHB has established cooperation with many countries, some of them are Thailand and the Philippines. Therefore, we proudly invited two special speakers today, which is Mr. Tani Glomjai and also Mr. John V. Flores from Manila, Philippines. The honorable all webinar participants, several things related to the new normal become topic of discussion in this webinar. They are holistic care for client in nursing homes amidst the new normal with, that will be presented by Mr. Michael from Philippines and roles of village health volunteer to monitor COVID-19 for NCDs people that will be presented by Mr. Tani from Thailand. 
Management of Chronic Illness with COVID-19 Nursing Care Perspective in Indonesia that will be presented by Mr. Made Swandika. And the last but not least, New COVID-19 Crisis Rising Domestic Abuse that will be presented by the one and only woman, uh, the speaker today, by Mrs. Novi from Indonesia. So, there is a lot to be discussed in this webinar that covers many aspects related with nursing. Finally, I, as the Vice Rector of Harapan Bangsa University, would like to say thank you and give a big appreciation to all committee and stakeholders who have provided assistance, time, and sincerity for the progress of Harapan Bangsa University in the future. May Allah the Almighty bless us. The Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen, by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, International Webinar of Diploma and Undergraduate Nursing Study Program, Faculty of Health, Harapan Bangsa University is officially opened. Thank you and enjoy this webinar. Okay, thank you Mrs. Murniati for the opening remark and official opening of this webinar. Okay, the fourth is speech from Dean of College of Nursing, Malina Uni Central University, Mr. Malvin Miranda, RNMAN. Hello, Mr. Malvin. Good morning. Morning. Okay, Good morning. Mr. Malvin, time is yours. To our honorable guests from Harapan Bangsa University and to the officials of the Indonesian National Nurses Association, a pleasant good morning from Manila Central University. Manila Central University is a school here in the Philippines which considered as the pillar in health science education. We are indeed very, uh, it is indeed very significant to participate in this mm -hmm. webinar through the participation of our mm -hmm. faculty in MCU mm -hmm. College of Nursing, Mr. Michael Jan B. Flores. With our commitment and dedication in the profession, we indeed this webinar will give awareness and knowledge to the various frontliners, especially the nurses and nursing students who will take care of adults with chronic illness. In new normal, we must be considered as one of the frontliners who will definitely implement preventive roles. And when we participate in the hospitals wherein we will take care of individuals and patients with chronic illness, our significant role is very important with the bedside care. The nursing care management that we render to them is the key wherein they will recover from these chronic illnesses. As we face COVID-19, the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, as part of the Southeast Asian nations, we are together to fight the spread of the COVID-19. As also the governor of the Philippine Nurses Association, NCR Zone 2, I am very much privileged also that we are in this together to fight for COVID-19. Thank you very much to the organizer. This is a commitment. This is a dedication to the profession a way on how we will definitely consider the role and the recognition of the World Health Organization as 2020 as the year of the International Year of the Nurse. Thank you very much and God bless to all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Malvin Miranda, uh, for your speech. The, the next agenda is welcome speech from the distinguished head of DPD PPNI Kabupaten Banyumas, Mrs. Fajar Riasi, as governor MM. Mrs. Fajar, Fajar. Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Masih di mute. Oh, video. Bentar. Fajar. Baik. Oke, okay, monggo. Uh, Suara saya terdengar. Yeah. Mohon maaf menyampaikan dengan bahasa Indonesia. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Yang terhormat 
Rektor Universitas Harapan Bangsa, yang terhormat para narasumber, yang terhormat segenap sivitas akademika Universitas Harapan Bangsa, uh, para peserta di seluruh uh, Indonesia maupun beberapa negara yang saya hormati dan yang kami banggakan. Puji syukur kehadiran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala bahwa sampai dengan pagi hari ini kami masih diberikan kesehatan, keselamatan, sehingga kita semua masih diperkenankan untuk mengikuti acara seminar yang diselenggarakan oleh Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Saya yang terima kasih kepada penyelenggara dalam hal ini, Universitas Harapan Bangsa, yang telah ikut berperan bagaimana meningkatkan pengetahuan untuk teman-teman uh, perawat yang barangkali kemu uh, kemungkinan banyak sebagian dari pesertanya adalah uh, dosen maupun mahasiswa tetapi paling tidak ke depan tentunya kami berharap bahwa apa yang dilaksanakan hari ini tentunya akan bermanfaat bagi pengembangan keperawatan di Indonesia wakil khususan untuk Jawa Tengah dan Banyumas uh, Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati terkait dengan keadaan COVID saat ini memang saat ini untuk uh, penderita semakin meningkat di era normal ternyata penemuan-penemuan kasus baru juga cukup signifikan baik dengan masyarakat umum maupun tenaga kesehatan dan ini yang kecil saja di Banyumas ternyata dengan hasil pemeriksaan swab massal yang dilaksanakan kemarin sebagian tenaga kesehatan terpapar dan itu terkonfirmasi covid positif artinya apa bahwa kita di dalam pemberian pelayanan tentunya sangat membutuhkan sebetulnya semua berperan artinya kami dari awal sebetulnya berperan eh, berharap banyak bahwa eh, kita yang di pelayanan melakukan pelayanan eh, seoptimal mungkin sampai mabuk covid sampai eh, tengah malam bahkan siang eh, tidak pernah istirahat untuk pelayanan covid nah kami berharap Uh, ada kerjasama yang baik antara pemberi pelayanan maupun dari uh, sekitar akan mika dalam hal ini kan ada unsur pengabdian masyarakat sehingga kami berharap sebetulnya dari awal bahwa di dalam masa covid ini uh, para dosen dari perguruan tinggi ikut membackup kami dengan contohnya apa ketika kita bingung terkait sop untuk perang covid misalnya kunjungan rumah kami dibantulah untuk membuat SOP. Jadi ada peran di mana yang kemudian uh, dari unsur pendidikan pun membantu kami yang di pelayanan. Karena pada saat pelayanan kami tidak mungkin kemudian memikirkan SOP-nya atau bila diperlukan. Kami berharap juga nanti akan kami berikan SKP-nya juga mungkin Bu Murni uh, terkait dengan uh, kegiatan pengabdian masyarakat. Bisa saja harapan bangsa membuat pelatihan daring, contohnya terkait bagaimana uh, pelayanan perawatan untuk saat ini dengan buat SOP atau pelayanan pada penderita ESPA supaya yaitu kita teman-teman itu tidak ada yang terpapar lagi karena kemarin dari 8 puskesmas, mohon info uh, sedikit kami berikan ternyata 7 puskesmas tenaga kesehatannya terpapar bukan tenaga dokter, artinya saya se sekarang sedang khawatir itu kemungkinan adalah perawat sehingga bagaimana dari dunia pendidikan ikut mendukung kami yang cukup di Banyumas saja lah atau bisa dilaksanakan dari untuk sejawatan atau bagaimana terkait bagaimana upaya pencegahan secara keilmuan supaya bisa diterapkan ke kami bagaimana cara penggunaan APD yang benar, pelepasan APD yang benar itu kami dibantu, itu harapan kami dari organisasi profesi tentunya ada peran dari unsur pendidikan yang mendukung kami tidak harus ikut pelayanan tetapi kami sebagai organisasi tentunya sangat mendukung kegiatan ini sehingga kami sampaikan congratulations on training the international seminar nursing care for adult patient with chronic illness in the new normal I hope the event will run smoothly and beneficial to the good of nursing Indonesia thank you to all the speakers and civitas akademika universitas harapan bangsa semoga acara berjalan dengan baik kurang lebihnya mohon maaf karena kami mohon maaf, mohon izin, segera lab kami ada kegiatan di gedung BPN ini terkait pembinaan tenaga kesehatan dalam hal ini perawat, bagaimana supaya pengaturan organisasi ke depan menjadi lebih baik. Keep the spirit of Indonesian disease, dan kami berharap tetap semangat perawat Indonesia di dalam COVID ini, 
Mohon maaf apabila banyak kekeliruan. Akhirul kalam. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks to Mrs. Fajar Triasi, Skapnas MM for the insightful welcome speech. Okay. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the main agenda, all uh, webinar participants are welcome to take a picture together for the documentation uh, for the assigned committee. Please take the picture of all Zoom participants. Okay, Mr. Reva. Yes. Slide one. Next. Satu, dua, tiga. Next. 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 Done, Mr. Reva. Okay, thank you. Thank you for all participants who are willing to take pictures together and also the assignments committee. To Mrs. Fajar. Okay. Thank you to Mrs. Fajar to, because there is something to do. She has to leave the webinar. The Honorable, all webinar participants, this webinar is divided into two sessions. The first session is presentation from the speaker one and two, followed by question and answer session. And the second session is presentation from speaker three and four, and followed by question and answer session. From the speaker one and two is coming from Mr. Michael John V. Flores, RN, PhD, from Manila Center University, Philippines, and Achan Tani Klumjai, RN, MSN, PhD, from Boro Marajonani College of Nursing, Payo, Thailand, to join us here. Our first speaker is Mr. Michael John V. Flores, RN, PhD. He will convey a presentation entitled Holistic Care for Elderly, elderly in Nursing Homes, the Context of New Normal. Hello, Mr. Michael. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Okay. Okay, Mr. Michael, uh, we invite uh, to convey your presentation in 45 minutes. To Mr. Michael, time is yours. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, nama saya Michael. Uh, saya berasal dari Filipina. Saya tinggal di Kota Manila. Saya adalah seorang guru. Uh, apa kabar? Uh, selamat pagi Indonesia. So, uh, di Kapin Thailand. Uh, Magandang umaga <laughs> ako ng mga Filipino na nun. Okay, so the topic that uh, I will be discussing is about holistic care for elderly in nursing homes, the context in the new normal. So we're going to discuss three parts. So number one, uh, what is nursing home? Uh, what is elderly? Uh, what is the meaning of new normal? Okay, okay next. Okay, so for the learning outcomes or for the learning objectives after this talk, we have four. We have satu, dua, tiga, apat. Okay. So number one is to understand the meaning of new normal. So we always see what is new normal in the, in the social media, in the newspaper, uh, in the announcement, okay? So that we have a uh, brief information and background what's the new normal actually. And then number two, uh, tiga, identify the changes of an elderly client because that is the main focus of our discussion. And then three, summarize the core practices in preparing for COVID-19 in nursing homes. Uh, we'll be using the CDC or, or the Center for Disease Control as our uh, references. And then the last one, adopt appropriate core values in the, in the new normal. So we're going to mention or cite some examples on what the attitude of a nurse should be in facing the new normal. Okay, next. So what is new normal? Okay, every day we, uh, we see the word new normal, whether in Facebook, in, in Twitter, in the newspaper, in, in the TV. But actually, what is the meaning of new normal? Okay, so I tried to check what is the meaning of new normal. And actually, it, it has a 
plenty of definition. It has a, it, its own definition, depends on the area or, or it depends on the sector. But allow me to use uh, a universal meaning from the Urban Dictionary. And it said that the new normal is a current state being after some dramatic change has transpired. So which means from the usual uh, uh, activity, uh, suddenly the following days you have, uh, you, you cannot do the same thing that you are doing before. If if the uh, if our normal look is going out, just bring our cell phone wallet. Now you cannot do that anymore, and, and there's some limitation because of the need of this new normal. And because of this new normal, uh, we are encouraged to deal or to adapt instead of being uh, in denial or being complainant. We have no choice. We are forced to adapt based on what is the need of the new normal. Okay, and then what are the example of the new normal? And these are the some of the changes. Uh, next. Okay, so number one, wearing a face mask. Like what I said before, if you're going to leave the house, you only need your cell phone, you only need your wallet. But now, you, can leave, you cannot leave the house without your face mask, right? And sometimes even the government make it a policy that when you leave the house, when you go out, you need to wear your mask or, or else you will be apprehended. Like for example, in the Philippines, uh, there's a policy that we really need to wear a mask if everybody wants to go outside of our house. And then cashless transactions. When you say cashless transactions, you are required to pay through online to, to limit the contact between the, the customer and even the seller. So the cashless transaction is very famous nowadays. And then the third one, TIGA, is the checkpoints. When you say checkpoints, before you enter in a certain establishment, you are required to be checked with the, with the thermometer, with the, with, with the gun, right? Even though you only have uh, low temperature, uh, you are not allowed to enter the premises, right? If you have 37.7, 37.8, you will be not be allowed to enter the premises. And that is one of the, the new normals nowadays. And then the fourth one is the alternative way of handshake. Why? Uh, because they want to limit the contact between the two persons. So uh, we can use the elbow to elbow. Uh, the Japanese use bow. Uh, in one video, the, 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 has, the nurses and, and the doctors are uh, having a foot-to-foot -foot, uh, gesture, okay? And then the, uh, the second to the last is social distance, uh, distancing. So like what the CDC recommended is we need to have at least six feet uh, distance between the next person. So we cannot stay together as much as we want, as much as we love to stay together. Uh, we cannot do that one anymore, okay? And then the last one is everything is, is migrating into online activities like this seminar. Uh, before we can have... Uh, I, I will be invited going to Indonesia and have a talk, but now everything is in online, uh, whether education, whether training, whether seminar, everything is online. Every, everyone is using Zoom, everyone is using Microsoft, everyone is using Google Meet, regardless of the age, right? Uh, whether you are young, you are old, you are adult, right? Everyone is migrated into online platform just to avoid the physical contract from, from one another. Uh, next. So yeah, so the new normal actually there there are some there are some experts telling that this is not actually a new normal. Why? Because it, it is a normal response of an individual uh, based on the how he wants to be protected. Like for example, in HIV, if you if you don't want to get sick, then you need to to be safe, right? If you know a certain disease that has no vaccine or that that has no uh, medicine. Your normal reactions is is to protect yourself, right? So some expert saying that this is not actually a new normal. Anyway, regardless if this is a new normal or not, uh, in general there are really drastic changes uh, happening around us. Regardless if you are coming from Indonesia, Thailand, India, or or Philippines, and that new normal is the next normal. Why why next normal? Uh, you can see most of the experts now using the word next normal instead of new normal because the new normal is, is the next normal. You, you will be expecting that wearing a face mask, social distancing, uh, cashless transactions, uh, online conventions, on, online meetings like this one will, will last long. This will not stop in an early period. Uh, we don't expect this one to, to end early. That's why even uh, even the education are shifting into online platform. So from new normal, this is our next normal. Now the question is, until when? Then we don't we don't know yet. Okay. 
Next. So that is the new normal in, in general. So now we're going to discuss what is late adulthood or the uh, elderly, okay, as, as part of the topic. Okay, next. Okay, late adulthood, according to the development of psychology, starts at 60 to 75 years old. So that is a very um, increase in age. Okay, and then we're going to discuss three aspects uh, affecting the elderly. So number one is physical changes. Uh, two, psychological functioning in late adulthood. And then the last one will be social factors. So we're just going to give uh, brief information uh, about the changes of the elderly so that we can have an idea uh, why do we why do we need to be focused on, on, on the elderly or uh, as a basis of whatever plan you want to have uh, affecting the elderly okay next okay so physical changes uh, we expect in decreasing cognitive function so the 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 processing of information is uh, somehow a little bit delayed uh, they're having a hard time uh, re remembering or processing the information. Sometimes they even have, uh, they don't even remember it anymore or it will take time, okay? So that is one of the changes involving the physical changes in elderly. The second one is decreasing heart, lung, and kidney function. So most of our elderly are already at risk of having a, a heart problems such as hypertension, uh, stroke, et cetera long the difficulty of uh, breathing because of the decreased uh, capacity in oxygen and then the kidney function they are very at risk for UTI why? because of the poor bladder control and then the third one is changes in skin so you have you can see that there's a, a poor skin targor or, or decrease in elasticity in the skin uh, next okay Decrease in muscle strength. So some some of the elderly uh, need assistance in doing their ADL. So what is ADL? That is their activities of daily living. Sometimes they are even dependent to their uh, uh, caregiver, okay, because of this decrease in muscle strength. And then you have your changes in sensory, and these are your decrease in vision. So they have difficulty uh, seeing. So you you see most of the elderly are already wearing uh, eyeglasses. And then the last one in physical changes is decrease in hearing. So you can see some of them wearing hearing aid, or you you need to speak loudly and 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 slowly for them for you to to understand. So those are the some of the examples of the physical changes affecting the elderly client. So now let's not proceed with the psychological uh, next. So for the psychological, uh, we have a sleep problem. Uh, risk for depression, long-term memory deficits, and personality beliefs. Okay, so sleep problems usually connected to the two. One is because of the physical problem, like, like what we mentioned before. And then the second one was the anxiety. Okay, so because of the aging, sometimes they try to think a lot of things, uh, whether they are they are uh, able to perform or they were able to, to done the task correctly or what will happen next. Okay, so those are the reasons why they are ha having a sleep problem. And then the risk for depressions. Okay, so our elders is very risk for depression. And then long-term memory deficits. So they have uh, already forgotten. Okay, so some some of the elderly already have uh, long-term memory deficits. Sometimes even the name of their husband or wife, even their children, they, they don't remember anymore. And then last one is personality and beliefs. So some of the experts said that whatever your personality and beliefs during your young age, Will, will maintain the same, okay? But there are some experts also saying that it may be uh, uh, the opposite of what you have, what you are during your younger age when you are in the elderly period or the late adulthood, okay? Next. Social factors. So this is, these are very important because most of the elderly are, uh, this is actually our, our, our focus. So number one, the, the elderly are very concerned with their retirement, okay? And then the second is loss of loved one and then death. So uh, I think it's, it's a government mandated that if you reach the certain age, you, you need to retire, okay? Whether you like it or not, you, you, need, you need to retire. You need, you, need, you need to stop from working. And that retirement will bring a lot of changes for the elderly. Why? Uh, before, if, they're, if they used to, to wake up early, go to work, uh, stay in the office, uh, be protect, be productive, okay. And then after the office hour, uh, they they meet their their working mates and then and then go home. But now, 
after you retire, uh, it depends on how you're going to use your time. Uh, but some of them, they just, uh, you know, try, try to have some other activities just to keep them busy. And then the second one is the loss of loved ones. So, so regardless if this is your husband, your wife, or your significant other. So those are one of the apprehension or the concerns of the elderly. And then the last one, of course, death. We all know that this age um, is risk, okay, or, or, you know, is closer to, to death. So these are the three uh, factors uh, involving the, the social aspect of the elderly. Okay, next. Okay, so what are the effects of COVID-19 nursing homes? So I tried to, to search some article or some news about the impact of COVID-19 to nursing homes. And, and these are the sum of the articles that I saw. Uh, next. Okay, so there are some nursing homes who are forced to close. Why? Because as elderly, they are very at risk of having the disease, okay? Because they already have a, a poor immune system uh, and their their body is, is too weak to fight the COVID-19. And they have no choice but to close the nursing home just to protect. Or they, they will close one one area and and, and try to uh, divide the, the residents in a different area that is, that is safe just to uh, limit the spread of the virus. And then, uh, the, the the other nursing homes are very protective regarding with the elderly and then even the government in the western considered the nursing home as the second option inputting the the client who are in quarantine or who are in the monitoring as one of the area uh to put this client right because uh the in the hospitals is the the, the respondents or the patients are getting bigger and bigger and and the and the hospital cannot accommodate them anymore so the, has, the nursing homes are one of the uh, considerations or one of the options in, in choosing where to place the COVID-19 for quarantine purposes. Okay, so we have for, we have closure of the nursing homes, uh, even it, which which uh, felt by different uh, country like 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 London, USA. Okay, so next. Okay, so allow me to share a short video. This is uh, two minutes. Uh, dua, dua minuto. First red wine. Back in normal times, group gatherings at this Saskatoon long-term care home were the daily high point. Today, the common areas are shut down and have been for more than a month. Yeah, we closed the art studio. We closed the spiritual care center, our big Tawa gathering space our physio gym, our OT area, our greenhouse, our pool. We first met Sue Ellen Beatty a year ago inside the home she runs, Sherbrooke. Okay, you good? They've always felt their different approach has made life better for the seniors who live here. A difference which may have saved their lives amid a pandemic wreaking a devastating toll in care homes across Canada. I have this heavy weight on my chest. My goal and everybody's goal here is that COVID-19 doesn't get into Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke took action sooner than most before any orders came from government, closing the home to visitors, even taking the temperature of all staff starting way back in mid-March, something many other homes still aren't doing. Elders now eat physically distanced, but they can take risks here that others can't because staff do not move between sections or between homes as they do in so many other facilities. Um, we're asking our staff to go straight home, um, to um, not be engaging with family members who don't live with them, to not be mixing with neighbors, not going into people's homes or having people into their homes. Means the residents are part of the workers bubble, limiting the risk of transmission. Sherbrooke has no COVID cases and here in Saskatchewan there are far fewer infections too. We are in a little bit of an advantage here in that um, some of the other provinces and countries um, were way ahead of the game before we got into it and so we we have the luxury of learning from other people. It's not just that the virus arrived here later or that Sherbrooke acted sooner but that the home was just better set up already its staff less mobile, less likely to carry the virus. The home saw early what was coming and shut things down. Everything but care.
David Common, CBC News, Toronto. Yeah, thank you for sharing that video. So that is one of the nursing home in Canada. So they, they acted uh, fast, even with, with, before that, uh, there is no announcement yet on what to do. So what they did is is they limit the, the number of visitors. They even limit the, the, the mobile or the moving of the healthcare practitioners. So they are required to, after the work, they, need to, they are required to go home straightly. And then they, they limit the activity of the residents in, in the nursing home. So those are some of the impact of, of COVID-19 to, to nursing homes, okay? Uh, next. So what are the core practices or what are the uh, preventions that, that we can that we can uh, perform to protect our elderly? So like what I said, we're going to use the CDC as, as our references in, in discussing these core practices, okay? So next. So number one, assign one or more individuals with training in infection control. So most of the hospital or most, in, most of the nursing homes have their own infectious uh, control nurse, okay? So I think that is one of the requirements. However, having a point person, having an individual who is updated regarding with the protocol in, in protecting our clients, in protecting our elderly in, in the COVID is very important because that person, that, that trained person will lead and will give direction on, on what to do, okay? So number one, assign one or more individuals to training in infect, infection control because COVID is very, uh, very uh, fast, okay? So nowadays there's there's a news that COVID now is, they are considering, considering that it's already airborne, okay? And then second is report COVID-19 cases, facility staffing and supply information. So why is there so necessary to, to report the COVID-19 cases? Because you want to determine if there is a local infection or local transmission in the area. Because if you already have two or more infected person in the nursing homes, uh, then you can consider that the COVID-19 is coming in that area. Okay, So that is the importance of uh, report, uh, reporting the COVID-19 cases. And then the facility stopping. So why it is necessary to inform okay, uh, the agencies about the, the stopping? Because uh, the importance of this one is you want if ever they will be infected it's be easier for them to do a contact tracing so who are, who are the the nurse on duty and even the other persons who are in duty in the in that specific ship and then supply information okay so what will be your task so customize system to track infections and prevention process measures and weekly data submission so it's very important to submit okay your informations your your census of COVID and even your your facility stopping. Okay, next. Educate residents, healthcare personals, visitors about COVID nineteen. So, residents, your client. This is these are your clients. This, these are your elderly. So, why educating is very important because uh, this will lead to active involvement, right? Because it will be difficult on, on their end to participate if they don't know what is happening. So educating the residents is very important because they are the, the primary recipient of our care, right? And then in, even the healthcare personnel on, on what to do and even the visitors. So visitors are very, uh, very uh, up, apprehensive, okay, regarding with the changes because uh, it's either the time that we'll be visiting the, the place will be limited, okay? And then the current precautions being taken in the facility and actions they should be take to protect themselves. So the activity for this one is the, number one is provide information. So this include what are the signs and symptoms. So as we all know, we have like we have the fever, the shortness of breath, the, the the dry the dry cough. Okay. So again, giving information will lead to active involvement of our stakeholders, and and this information will help lessen the the stress and anxiety because. The, the thing that causes anxiety is the unknown, right? If you don't know what will happen, if you don't know the cause, it will really cause anxiety, okay? And giving information will help resolving this stress and anxiety. To regularly review CDC and infection control. So why there is a need to regularly review the infection protocol? Uh, like what I said, um, COVID is very um, rapid, okay? Very... Uh, if it's mutating, okay, I don't know if mutating is the right term, but it, it changed a lot, right? Because uh, bef uh, before they consider it as 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 droplet, and now if they will consider it as, as airborne, they're, 
there will be a new set of uh, protocol or, or a set of protection, right? Because uh, droplet is different from airborne. Airborne is very uh, potent compared to droplet. And then the third was educate and train healthcare pr uh, practitioners. So because they are the frontliners, okay, we can we cannot take at risk of losing our or our frontliners, because if, if we don't have frontliners, then there will be a big problem. Who will take care of our el elderly? Educate residents and families on topics including information. So like what I said, uh, informing our main recipient who are the elderly is very important. Even though they may have a difficulty understanding what is COVID. But giving them enough information, basic information that COVID is very potent and, and very contagious, I think that is enough. Okay, and even the family, because I think that uh, the goal of the family is to protect, protect their loved ones, and then have a plan and mechanism to regularly communicate with residents. So uh, we have many platforms. We have we, we have it online. So I think uh, regularly meeting and discussing and updating is very important. Next. Implement source control measures. So what are these? So of course, the healthcare practitioners should wear masks all the times, okay? Especially inside inside the facilities because this is the way of protecting uh, your clients, okay? And then, and even yourself, okay? The second, residents should wear a cloth face mask covering, okay? Or, or face mask, okay? Uh, in some nursing homes, like for example, in Norway, uh, the only person, sorry, the only elderly or the only residents uh, who wear masks are the dementic, demen, dementic patient. Okay, why? Because uh, they having difficulty remembering or processing the information. So you need to do that one, putting the mask for for themselves. Okay, because other cases for elderly, they still have intact uh, cognitive function. Okay, then last one, visitors if permitted into the facility should wear a cloth covering while in the facility. Okay. The changes nowadays in, in the nursing homes is before the, the residents were asked to go out from their room and go to the common area and meet their, their visitors or their families. But now what is happening is that commonly what they are doing is that they, they will have the visitors check first for temperature and other positive uh, possible signs of COVID. If they are clear, then they will bring that visitors is straight to the room of the elderly. Why? Because this is to, to limit the exposure of that visitor to the, to the other uh, residents. Okay, so that is the usually practice now. And then have a plan for visit annexation. So send a letter or emails to the families. So if you have changes in the in the in the practice regarding with the visiting hours, then I think the, the family should be informed. Okay. If they're only allowed to visit once once a week or twice a week, I think that changes should be uh, uh, given to the family of the residents, okay? Again, uh, informing and educating the individual will lead to active involvement and active participation, and there will be no resistance, okay? Then post signs at the entrance to the facility, advising visitors to check in with the front desk to be assessed, okay? So it is necessary, like what I said a while ago, part of the new normal, is there will be a regular checkpoint. So regularly before entering any facilities, whether it is a nursing home, a mall, a school, you will be checked for a temperature, right? And then ask visitors to inform the facility if they develop fever within the 14 days, why it is necessary to, to have this information. Because if the visitors have the fever within the 14 days after visiting the nursing home, then there might be a possible possible reason that the COVID-19 was acquired in the nursing facility, okay? So it's very important that you will ask the visitors that if they will develop a fever or a COVID sign, sign and symptom within 14 days, then they should inform you right away, okay? And then have a plan for when the facility will implement additional restrictions, okay? Next. Provide supplies necessary to adhere to recommend dead infection control. So this is one of the challenges most of the nursing uh, institution, not only nursing homes, is the is the supply of the PPE. Okay, I think this is one of the issues. I don't know if only in the Philippines or even other other areas. So hand hygiene supplies, your, your soap or, or your alcohol, okay, your, your towel is very important because hand washing is prevention. Okay. Then for so, uh, personal protective equipment or your PPE, your 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 mask, your your gown. Your, your goggles, okay, and then the respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. So, these supplies will protect all, 
the residents and the healthcare practitioners in getting the COVID. Okay, this this the supplies will, will help the spread or the stop of the COVID-19. Okay, and and providing supplies is very important. And then create a plan for testing residents and healthcare personnel. So why there is a need for testing the residents and healthcare personnel? Uh, this is always the demand of the, the, the people is to, to have a mass testing. Okay, and the reason of that is that uh, for early detection, right? Because if you were able to detect that you have one personnel or one residence that is, that is positive, then you can easily act. You can easily isolate that individual who is infected of infecting the other um, residents or the healthcare practitioners. So that is uh, the very importance of having the residents and healthcare personnel uh, subjected to COVID testing. Okay. But again, it depends on the supplies of the nursing home or, or the hospital. Next. Then evaluate and manage health care personnel, personnel. So why there is a need to evaluate and manage health care personnel? Remember, they are the one who are called frontliners. When you say frontliners, they are the one uh, first meeting the patient. Okay, They are the one accepting the patient. They are the one doing the, the, the intervention or the plan. Okay, So number one, if the uh the nurse gets sick then allow allow him or allow her to to be on sick leave okay when you say implement sick leave policies that are non-punitive when you say non-punitive it, it's not a form of punishment okay but a consideration given to the to the healthcare workers and then as part of routine practices uh healthcare practitioners regularly monitor themselves for fever and symptoms so why 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 there is a need for constant monitoring of uh, covid uh, related symptoms okay like what we said uh, we need to be uh, uh, prudent okay we need we need to be uh, proactive okay uh, to try to determine if we are already at risk or we are already experiencing the, the the covid case because you know if if there will be a late tracing that you are already covid case then there's a big factor that you will infect, infect uh, other 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 people okay create an inventory of all volunteers and personnel to provide care in the facility i guess the importance of this one is to do the contact tracing okay it's very important to determine who are the people involved who are the people working who are the volunteers and the personnel because again if there is a need to do a contact tracing it will be easier for you to to do that one okay just, uh, just imagine if you don't have any record and then there is one person infected how can you gather this these people and have it tested okay so uh, having that record of the volunteers and people uh, is very important and then screen all healthcare practitioners at the beginning of their shift for fever and symptoms so again the checkpoints the checking of your temperature is part of the new normal and then develop plans to mitigate staffing shortage when you say mitigate this is to uh, prevent okay or, or be proactive be, be, uh, you need, you need to think in advance how to solve the the, the possible uh, short staffing or the, the the short supply of nurses. Why? Because if the demands are keep on, on, on coming, coming, and there is an increase in COVID, then there is a risk that our nurses will be get tired or will get sick eventually. So it's very important to have a a, a, a backup plan. Okay. Then identify space in the facility that could be dedicated to monitor and care for residents. So you need to have an exclusive area intended for the COVID case, COVID-19 cases. Uh, I don't know if you are if you, if you watch what Wuhan Wuhan China did because they build one hospital only intended for COVID. Uh, I think one of the reasons is that they want to uh, have an exclusive area and they want to minimize the spread of the of the COVID cases to the other patient. So putting one facility in one area intended only for possible COVID or a COVID patient is very important. So number one is identify space in the facility that could be dedicated to care for residents when we confirm COVID. And then two additional information about cohorting residents. When you say cohorting is grouping your, your elderly according to their, to their case. Okay, Have a plan for how residents in the facility who develop COVID-19 will be handled. So it's very important, again, that you already have a plan. Uh, you, ha you, you, you already have a protocol set, okay? If this COVID-19 uh, will occur, like for example, like the video we watched ago, 
uh, they already limited the number of visitors. They already limited the the movement of the of the healthcare practitioners. They already limited the activity of the residents, and that is a very good action actually to 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 stop the spread of the COVID. Okay, next. Create a plan for managing new admissions and readmission whose COVID-19 status is unknown. So, like what I said, uh, COVID is very um, uh, mutant. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like you don't know what's happening, where, where, it's, where it's coming from, okay? So, placing the residents in a single person room or in a separate observation uh, so the resident can be monitored for evidence for COVID-19. So, sometimes uh, uh, clients are already staying for a longer longer of time and then the the, the sign and symptoms will appear on the on the third week or fourth week or sometimes uh the clients are already negative and then after a week they will be positive again so monitor, monitoring the for for possible case uh, is very important and then evaluate and manage residents with symptoms of covid-19 so ask residents to report if they feel feverish or have symptoms so uh informing your 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 head that you have a fever or any COVID related symptoms is very important uh, because you cannot uh, take risk of considering that fever as a normal fever. So, next one is actively monitor all residents upon admission and this daily for fever. So again, fever is the main main one of the method in in early detection for COVID cases. And then the last one is. The health department should be notified about residents or the healthcare practitioners with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. Okay, so in the Philippines, uh, it is required for any hospital institution or for any any institution to give information to our Department of Health regarding with the status of the COVID. Okay, if it's increasing, if, if it's decreasing, if there's a new admission. Okay, because uh, that that figures will determine. Uh, what will be the next action? Okay, next. So these are some of the of the images or articles that I saw in, in the internet. So like in the in the first picture, the visitors is uh, separated from the residents. Okay, with with the with glass, so they can see each other. Uh, the 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 young the young uh, guy, the young client is is singing uh, for the patient. And however, even though they have the interaction, there is still a, a barrier between the two. Okay, the second one is the testing of the residents. Again, early detection is very important because if you will detect the, the that your residents are positive, then there's there's already spread in in the area. So early detection is very important, whether uh, for the residents, for your clients, or for the healthcare practitioners. So even wearing the PPE, like 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 here in the picture, they are wearing gown, uh, goggles, face shield, and and mask and, and gloves. Okay, so it's very important also to protect yourself. Then the third picture shows social distancing um, between the residents and the and the family. Okay, next. Okay. If there is uh, no visitors policy, okay, uh, the visitors can just uh, check on their on their relatives uh, through the window, okay. And then the second picture in the middle is the use of the technology or the internet as one of the platform in keeping your residents connected, okay. Zoom is very very famous now. I think they are very rich because of this one, of this COVID, okay. So. Uh, teaching your your clients, your elderly clients or late late adulthood clients, uh, to be immersed in the online technology will help uh, bring or or solve the feeling of isolation or the feeling of loneliness. Okay? because you can see you can still see each other. Okay, and then the last one, being resourceful. Okay, so the visitor and the residents can still hug, hug each other, but they are still protected. Okay, with the use of the um, covering. Okay, so next. Next, please. Okay, so the core values. So uh, allow me to use the, the core values of MCU. So these are just suggested core values. So it depends on you if you want to adopt it, if you want to add, if you want to, to, to omit some of the core values that will be mentioned. Okay, so next. Okay, so what are these core values? So you have your prudence, your resiliency, your perseverance, your integrity, your nurturing, and teamwork. Again, 
uh, this is the core values of MCU. This is our core values. Uh, this is what we want to develop uh, to our future nurses. But again, it, it, it's up to you if you want to adopt it. These are just suggested core values. So next. So we're going to discuss it one by one and why it is uh, necessary. So prudence. Prudence in, in Bahasa is kebijaksanaan. Okay, I don't know if, if, if I pronounce it correctly. So let, let's let's relate the being prudent uh, to the video that you, you watched a while ago. Okay, so the, that, that nurse already stopped the spread of the virus even without the announcement or even without the the protocol okay so what what that nurse did is that they limit the the visitors okay uh they 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 stop the the big the big gatherings in the nursing homes uh they they have changes in the policy okay that is being to them because you were able to to apply your crit critical thinking on what will be the activity to to stop or to prevent the spread of the COVID, okay? So again, that is uh, prudence, okay? Or prudent or kebijak sanan, okay? So next, perseverance. So perseverance, again, uh, nurses are very important because we are called the front frontliners. In the Philippines, 2020 is declared, was declared as a uh, health, healthcare nurse, something like that, okay? So being updated, uh, regarding with the uh, information or the knowledge that you that you need uh, relating or involving COVID is very important. Okay, so you should always be updated because those information will help us a lot to to perform our tasks and also to protect ourselves. Okay, so that is uh, perseverance. Uh, next, resiliency. So resiliency, you can see this hook. Okay, hook is one of the hero, right? And in, if you watch uh, his movie, regardless how many how many enemies, how many bullets, how many bombs, okay, he still go up, okay, um, he still stand up, okay. So that should be also one of the characteristics of a nurse is be resilient, okay? regardless of 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 COVID, regardless of any disease. We we need to stand up. Uh, we we need to to respond. Okay, positively with the challenges. Okay, next. Integrity. What is integrity? Uh, as part of the CDC protocol. Hello? Yeah. Okay. So as part of the CDC protocol, is you need to inform uh, your, your, your institution if you, if you develop fever or if you're not feeling well. And I think being, being, uh, uh, that is a character of, of having the integrity and also uh, giving a correct care to our patient is also part of our uh, integrity as a nurse okay uh, next nurturing giving care to our elderly is very important because why we, they are already at risk of, uh, of being depressive uh, feeling of isolated uh, feeling of loneliness so the constant the continuous care is very important to our elderly clients especially if the institution or the nursing home decided to limit the number of visitors or to limit the family visiting the, the nursing home so uh, so it will be us uh, in the place of the uh, family of our elderly and then the last one next teamwork so if you can see the picture uh, there is two small guys Padding, padding the bicycle, okay? If the other one will stop, then they will fall down, okay? They, they will not go anywhere, okay? And teamwork is very important. Like like what my Dean Malvin said, we are in this together. COVID will not choose if you are the client, if you are the resident, if you are the family, if you are the nurse, if you are the doctor. COVID is immortal, right? It, whether you are poor, you are rich, or average individual, uh, COVID will not uh, spare you. Okay, so teamwork is very important in dealing this COVID. Teamwork involving all the stakeholders, uh, your family, the residents, the, the nurses, the other personals, and even the admin. They should be in that uh, situation together. Okay, without without any of 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 those uh, participating it, it will it will be difficult okay so those are the suggested core values 
in times of the COVID. Okay, next. Okay, so your takeaway, our our takeaway. Okay, this is what I want you to remember. Uh, uh, involving my talk about the holistic care for the our elderly, elderly clients in nursing home. So next. Okay, so remember the A, B, C's, and N. Okay, again A, B, C, and N. Okay. Um, after this, you create your own ABC, okay? You can either chat, use the chat box, or maybe submit it to your faculty, okay? So what is ABC and N? Okay, so number one, A, avoid the spread of the virus. So preventing the spread of the virus is very important. I think regardless regardless of any nursing home, regardless of any institution, even in, in the local offices, whether in your home, the main goal in this new normal is to stop the spread of the virus okay and that is our a avoid the spread of the virus okay second balance there should be a balance in the healthcare okay always remember that although our job is to protect our elderly but it's also our job to protect ourselves okay it is our job to give care and comfort to our uh, client but it's also our job to take care of ourselves okay so do not forget to take care of yourself so there should be a balance in in the healthcare protecting the the patient and protecting yourself okay because if there is increased increased number of, of covid 19 for the residents then there will be a uh, short demand for nurses okay same thing if there is increased number of of covid cases for our healthcare professionals then there will be a problem for our residents who will take care of them but so there should be a balance in the healthcare system and see Comfort our elderly. So give continuous care, um, care, uh, comfort, compassion, all, all the C, okay? Compassion, care, and be competent, okay? So everything that you can think of that start with letter C, okay? You, you can put it here. So comfort to our elderly to limit the feeling of loneliness and isolation. Like what I said, like, like, like what we discussed a while ago, uh, they are already at risk for having uh, depression or having sleep problem or having anxiety okay and giving comfort and care uh, to our elderly will help and or will prevent that feeling okay to our uh, early elderly client so again a b and c avoid the spread of the virus balance in the healthcare and comfort to our elderly now what is the word n okay because remember the abc's and n in the new normal so what is n okay next so you can apply the nursing process. I think everyone here is very familiar with the nursing process because that is one of our fundamental skills. That is the first first skills that we need to develop. And that skills is we can apply this one until we retire, right? Even in our daily living. Okay, what is nursing process? You have your ad pi. What is ad pi? Your assessment, your diagnosing, your your planning, your implementing, and your evaluation. Okay. So for the assessment, uh, consultation with your stakeholder is very important. So who are these stakeholders? Your residents who are your clients, the family of, your, of the residents, the uh, healthcare uh, personnel, and the, and the admin, okay? So, yeah. Okay, so having, having the information coming from the stakeholders, having them, uh, involved okay in the assessment is very important because that will serve as your database okay and that database will be utilized for the diagnosis because uh you will try to to synthesize and and analyze what should be the the the, the diagnosis or or your um the, the plan okay so it's either you're going to create, create a protocol okay so that's your diagnosis so once you have the diagnosis uh then you can come out with the and with the planning so when you say planning of course you should apply this the word smart so the planning should be specific measurable attainable realistic and time bound because this will serve as your criteria in measuring if your planning uh, is uh, uh can 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 be met okay and then you have your implementation so you try to put all the all the activities that you think uh, helpful 
uh, in, in order for you to meet the plan. And then you have your evaluation. Okay, so when you do the evaluation, you only have three. Either the either goal met, goal partially met, and goal not met. Okay, when goal met, it means you have good assessment, you have good diagnosis, you have good planning, you have good implementing. So it's up to you if you want to, to maintain the the nursing care plan or, or if you want to stop it because you're able to solve the problem. The goal partial limit, you can review the assessment, diagnosis, plan, implementing. And when the goal is not totally met, then you need to revise or to revisit. Okay, so that is the purpose of your nursing process. Okay, next. So again, allow me to leave you this with this one. Uh, again, in new normal in COVID-19, together we are stronger. Okay, so next. Uh, I, I would like to share this picture. This was in 2016, the, the first time I visited your school. Uh, so, so we also give a seminar. So this that one is Sir Lian. Okay, next. Terima kasih banyak. Sukses selalu untukmu. Allow me to 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 thank the organizer for inviting me. Of course, my, uh, my dean, uh, our school, for giving this opportunity to be involved in this seminar. But allow me to inform everyone, I'm not a doctor yet. I'm currently on my uh, dissertation. So hopefully, I will finish soon. But because of the COVID, it's giving me a hard time to do my data gathering. So again, terima kasih banyak. Sukses selalu untukmu. Terima kasih. Sama-sama, Mr. Michael. Okay, uh, for sharing your knowledge with us. It seems uh, like that there have been uh, many participants many participants who want to ask, I would like to remind again for those who want to ask something to our speaker, uh, you can give your question to the link shared by committee. Okay, to all participants, it is necessary for you to know that be said using Zoom application, mm -hmm. it also be assessed, assessed mm -hmm. by the YouTube streaming. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, our second speaker is mm -hmm. Achantani, uh, our NPHC, he will uh, convey a presentation entitled Rule of Village Health Volunteer to Monitor COVID-19 for NCDs People. Hello, Chantani. Okay. Uh, Chantani? Okay. 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 Yes, okay. to my yes. voice. Yes, good. The star is clear, right? Yes. Is the okay. is clear, right? Right. Okay, okay first, uh, let me read uh, Achantani Curriculum Vitae, the last education from Achantani, Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing Studies, a promotion from University of Edinburgh, Scotland, United Kingdom, and Occupation Director of Oro Marajonani College of Nursing, Payo. Thailand and uh, Achantani, you have 45 minutes to present it. Okay, Achantani, time is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, moderator. Uh, I feel extremely honored to be here to join the seminar. And thank you for the information from Dr. Michael to say about the, uh, the care for the um, holistic care and for misses for people uh, in the COVID-19 and new normal era, right? And my talk is about the role of village health volunteer to monitor COVID-19 for NCD people. The outline, we have uh, three sections. The first is who are the village volunteer and the laws of the, health, uh, the village health volunteer. And the last one is new normal situation, right? Next slide, please. Next. Next slide, please. Yes. And firstly, I would like to clarify who are the village health volunteer. The health volunteer is very important person in the community to help uh, peop to help uh, the people in the community. I uh, it's like a good health and gain more knowledge about the health literacy, something like that. The health volunteer defined as a community member 
who works almost exclusive in the community. And because in Thailand, we have a lot of people in the community and there is not enough healthcare provider to look after people in the community. We have to set some group of people in the community to help the healthcare provider to look after the health status of the people in the community. Uh, the village health volunteer is very important person to do this job in the community. In Thailand, we have been in place the health volunteer for over 30 years and uh, they are the backbone of the healthcare primary and the community based public health. In one village, in the community has at least one health volunteer. And a total of approximately 750,000 volunteers in the community. And one health volunteer responsible for five to 15 households function as a team in the village and they are supervised by the senior health volunteer or primary care officer in the health services in the community. And next, next slide, please. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm speak so fast. And this slide show you the health volunteer do in the community. The first of all, they work with the local care center and the sub-district level and supervised by the healthcare district officer. Because uh, normally we know the nurse uh, work in the hospital, but in the other side, they, we don't know the work of nurse in the community do. And there are not enough nurse in the community to look after the people, particularly for the people who have uh, NCD problem. The health volunteer works for this problem. In this situation, they work with the health care uh, officer in the primary care promotion hospital. The job of health volunteer in uh, the community can define and in the next slide. Yes. Uh, we let Health Volunteer is designed to communicate and message and mobilize the community to, pra to participate. This mean, uh, this, this law is mean Health Volunteer, they are the agent between nurse and patient in the community. They can transfer some message from the healthcare provider in the services to the patient by communicate in the local language. Because sometimes uh, in, in Thailand, we have many, 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 uh, many type of people who's, who stay in the community. Some people are huge type and some people who, who are use, uh, sorry, and some people who use local language cannot understand uh, the language who speak in uh, the central past, the healthcare volunteer have to be the Asian translates from the uh, the official language to local language or to huge type language. And sometimes they transfer the message by the writer or by the official line or social media to uh, the patient in the community or the household, particularly for uh, the, uh, the language about the technical term of the medication or the treatments from the hospital. The next slide is show you the volunteer, here volunteer in an X-ray machine to inspect and see for new patient in the community and report to the district health officer. This law is mean uh, we cannot find a new case in the community by the nurse who work in the hospital or the healthcare provider who work in the 
primary care center. The health volunteer who work in the uh, in the community will know the new case or the new people who come to the community and then they come to inspect and list uh, and check for the list item uh, about the uh, the sign and symptom of the disease when they get from the uh, different area come to come to the community some something like that they have the list uh, I mean they have the form the form from the uh, healthcare healthcare officer to check for the people how they how they got the fever and how they uh, eat and how they get the skin from something like that. And then they report information from this detail of Next slide, please. Next, yes. We let here volunteer is a delivery man and medication and food. Um, with the new normal in the COVID-19 situation, it's very difficult to go to the hospital and get the medications from the doctor. And sometimes it's very difficult to buy food or buy uh, something for the cost for, uh, for the for the life stay. The health care, oh, sorry, the health volunteer is a delivery man. If you know the gap food or gap delivery, and they serve uh, medication or food, something like that. They buy the bicycle or they buy the food from the food store or from the restaurant. And uh, being the food or medications from the hospital to the patient in the household, particularly uh, NCD patient who cannot come to the hospital and they have to take the medicine continue as the the health care warrant sorry the health volunteer is a man who check for the medication and then they have to check for the right medication the dose of the medication and the way of the take and the way of taking of the medication to the patient because nurse or healthcare provider cannot check this in the uh, COVID-19 situation because of the social distancing or because of the spread, very spread of the COVID-19 in the situation or in the community. And the healthcare volunteer comes to the hospital or come to the primary care center to check the list of the people with the healthcare provider and then they take the medicine or the procedures from the health care provider to the patient house. The next slide is show you about the health state that a shaker. It may be uh, very normal for every country uh, to see this picture because the health care volunteer uh, will check the temperature of the people in the community, particularly for the NCD patient. Uh, they measure the, uh, sorry, they, uh, they check the uh, blood pressure and sometimes they try to, uh, to seek the symptom that is uh, different from the uh, from the normal way of the patient who stay at home or patient who cannot, uh, so how to say, uh, like a disability, uh, they comes to check and they come to report uh, the health status from the patient and then they decide to do with the patient is like, uh, 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 is like a, a how to say, uh, decrease the high temperature or separate the patients from the uh, family member, something like that. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this slide is show you the village health volunteer launch door to door education on COVID-19. It's particularly in the new normal. Uh, the healthcare volunteer is very important to launch the door to door education because of the uh, pandemic of the COVID-19. People scared to go anywhere or uh, to meet some people outside the house. They would like to stay in the house and they try uh, to, to look after themselves. But um, some people in the community don't know how to protect themselves from the COVID-19 or from the disease, particularly for the NCD patient. They scare for really scary for the COVID-19. Uh, the healthcare volunteer is uh, the people who come to the house and then educate the NCD patient how to protect themselves from the COVID-19 and from the symptom of for uh, sorry and from the, um, the the spread the spread of the COVID-19 from one to one something like that. Next slide, please. Yes, and sometimes uh, the village health volunteer is like a mobile clinic office because in Thailand we have not enough uh, primary primary health services in the community, and there are not enough healthcare provider to look after or to service all the patient in the community. The health care warrant, sorry, the health volunteer have to organize the mobile clinic in the center of the village or in the, in the center of the community. And then they are the consultant or the counselor of the patient in the community to ask the question or to inspect the um, temperature or to do something with the health data. And then they try to uh, prepare themselves from the pan pandemic of the COVID-19. The health care, sorry, the Windlet Health Volunteer uh, do, this, do this job and then they consult if there is some, is some problem or some question they cannot answer to the patient. They consult by mobile phone or the live application to the healthcare provider in the primary care center. The next slide will show you the key success factor of using Winlet Health Volunteer. This is the, the design uh, of Thailand to use a uh, village health volunteer to control the COVID-19 for NCD people. We have two category of this uh, model. And one is the internal factor and the, the another one is external factor. For the internal factor, it's about self-protective uh, behavior. This means the health, the health volunteer have to look after themselves and check themselves every day uh, for the symptom of the COVID-19 or uh, the fever or the high, uh, temp, uh, high, the fever or high blood pressure before they go outside to look after the patient in the house. And the next one is the care. The care is mean cell care. The health volunteer have to, to care themselves by using the supplier. It's like uh, uh, alcohol gel or surgical mask or sometimes have to take medicine uh, to uh, get them well. And the next one is watch. Watch is mean uh, watching hand correctly and six step or seven step uh, 
uh, depend on the uh, depend on the uh, the rule of the uh, they they again notice from the the healthcare provider and washing hand quality is will help the health volunteer uh, protect from the COVID nineteen and next one is the motivation for us because the health volunteer work in the community with no monetary they do with the uh we do with the team uh because of the belief of thailand we help people happy is the good in this of buddhist right and in this situation is no money for the health care volunteer right and the next one is the perception of civility of the disease this means the knowledge the health care volunteer have to gain more knowledge of the disease uh, particularly for the COVID-19 before they go to uh, look after the people in the household or before they go to be the consult consult uh, consultant for the people in the community is for the external factor the external factor the first one is for control the control is mean the protective disease control and how to do for the protective disease control yeah it's like uh, for the uh uh for uh, give notice for the people in the community and give us some supply or equipment to the uh, people or the patient in community is like a surgical surgical mask or alcohol gel and sometimes we have to uh concern about the breakfast or the task that they throw away from the house they have to separate the bin uh which one is for the infected lab base and which one is for the general lab base something like that the next one is communication and planning and following up this is very important thing to do with the patient in community by the health volunteer. The health volunteer have to plan before they go to the house to see the patient in the household. Uh, they have to plan which patient have to uh, have to see the first and the next one and the uh, 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 so sorry, how to say? Uh, they have to they have to make the list the first the first patient to do first, and the patient can uh, go to visit for a uh, later something like that. And next, they have to plan for the uh, equipment to equipment to uh, to bring to the house of the for the for the health care, it's like that they have to uh, take the scanner for the temperature or the sphygno manometer for the blood pressure or the uh, the dressing says something like that. And the communication and the communication, uh, as we as I said before about the local language. The communication is very important for the health volunteer to translate from central language or of for the for formal language to the local language, particularly for the borderline people. Uh, most of them are the Hugh Thai. They have to translate from the formal language to the Hugh Thai language. Uh, this means the Hugh Thai people will understand how to protect themselves from the disease and how to uh, how to care themselves for the healthy and next is the follow up the following up is mean come to visit again and again particularly when the uh, chronic covid 19 has come to the community 
the NCD patient really scared of this situation. The healthcare volunteer have to visit the NCD patient in the community and uh, make sure for the uh, protection of themselves by encourage uh, NCD patient to do follow by the healthcare volunteer. It's like a, a demonstration. Yeah, how to wash the hand and how to use the surgical mask and how to use the how to use the serving spoon and how to use oh sorry how to wash the clothes and the uh, how and how to, uh, to and how to use the lapwish bin uh, the separate lapwish bin particularly uh, when uh, some people in the household got a high fever. The health volunteer had to communicate to the uh, people, the, the family member, to separate them from the house and isolate them. And then it has to uh, separate everything from the, uh, from the family member, particularly uh, the routine a uh, routine equipment is like uh, the plate, the glass, and the the soap in the toilet. Yeah, something like that. They have to gain the knowledge for the patient to separate or to avoid from the people who who got a high fever. The next is information. The information is very important for the patient in community. Uh, the information is about uh, the pan pandemic of COVID-19 and how to protect themselves from the COVID-19. The information can serve by the social media and from the, uh, from the television or from the radio. Uh, the, from the radio, in, uh, I mean from the local radio and the house reader or the community list come to speak or come to announce for the information of the uh, pandemic or uh, from the disease and how to protect themselves from the disease. Every day, the uh, community list come to announce with the radio, uh, local radio station every day and every day. The last one is for the supportive or uh, support for equipment and medical supply. Uh, it's like a Dr. Michael said, the, sub, the medical supply is very important to take care of the patient or to take care of the elderly in the house. In Thailand, we are the same situation. The village health volunteer have to uh, serve the medical supply or the equipments for the patient in the house. And firstly, they got the supplier from the primary care center in the community or from the hospital in the community. And then they take the equipment or the medical supplier to the patient in the house one by one. And like uh, we said before, the equipment is very rare in Thailand in the COVID-19 situation. And sometimes the health volunteer have to do the surgical mask by themselves. They bought the cloth from the market and they sew, uh, they make the, the mask and then they take the mask to the patient in hospital, uh, sorry, in the community to protect themselves from the spread of the disease. This is the key success factor that Thailand decide for the village healthcare volunteer for everyone to do and follow the guideline. The next slide will show you about the new normal. It's like uh, Dr. Michael says, the new normal is very uh, un unusual for people in the world because of, uh, we have not keep the, dis uh, the dis distancing before, and now we have the next, uh, the next era, we have to uh, 
uh, we have to follow for the new normal, uh, like uh, keep dispensing, uh, eat hot, and use one own spoon and wash hand uh, very or very often, and practice solitude to stay alone or hurry back home and have a social responsibility. And this is normal. This is a new normal situation that people have to concern about this. And for the village here volunteer in the new normal and how they do with the new normal. Uh, please go to next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide will show you the guidelines for the village health volunteer to work with the new normal era. And the first, we talk, uh, I would like to talk about the self-awareness of the village health volunteer. The first one, they have to wear the mask on surgical mask every day before they go to the patient house or before they uh, care the patient. The next one is hand washing. Hand washing is very important for the new normal situation because of the disease can spread or can infect from the hands from one to one or for from uh, or for uh, ourselves. The hand washing is used alcohol gel or uh, the soap is it's okay, right? And next is for the keep distancing and keep away the healthcare volunteer have to keep away from the patient before the new normal situation or before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The village health volunteer can cause to the, the patient, can touch or can uh, talk cause or something like that. And now they have to change their behavior. They have to keep distancing away from the patient allow one meter or two meter. And the next is reporting. Reporting is very important. The healthcare, sorry, the health volunteer have to report them, uh, their symptom or their sign every day before they go to, uh, to see the patient in the community. And why they have to report uh, themselves for the sign and symptom because of uh, normally the, the, the health volunteer uh, have to inspect uh, the sign and symptom of people and they don't know sometimes they can get uh, or they can uh, uh, inspect or got sorry and get some disease from patient or not and they can protect themselves by scan themselves or touch, uh, or sorry, or measure the blood pressure or the temperature, body temperature. And then they report in the uh, medical form with themselves. Uh, Sometimes they have the sign and symptom or high uh, fever or high temperature. They cannot do their work with the patient in the community. And they have to go to consult the uh, primary care officer in the hospital or the health care center. The next one is screening. Screening is very important for the new people come to the community. Uh, the health care volunteer have to inspect or have to find the new case or new people come to the uh, community by ask some people or telephone to the family member for the new ones come to the uh, community. When they file or then they uh, know for the new case come to the community, the health volunteer have to come to that house and then they have to, uh, they have to scan the temperature and they have to tell the new people fill the form about the health status and the sign and symptom before they come to the community and 
when they stay in with the family member in the house. And the last one for the self-awareness of the village health volunteer is the self-observing. The self-observing is mean they have to observe the uh, a normal sign of the uh, of the the temperature, the feet, uh, the blood pressure, the heart rate, or the skin, and the sneeze. Yeah, something like that. And they have to observe every day. And next one, the next slide is talk about how the village here volunteer people uh, prepare before work. It's very important for village health volunteer to prepare the document or themselves before work. And let's see this slide. We'll talk about uh, the job. Have the have the healthcare volunteer to prepare the first. Uh, first day is the patient name list. They have to know today. Uh, they will go to visit who, right? And how many people come to visit for one day, and and which one is very, uh, which one is uh, very severity, and which one is uh, normal status? Yes, something like that. They have to do the list before go outside to uh, see the patient. Next one is the knowledge. The health volunteer have to gain more knowledge about the disease, about the uh, uh, protection, and about the way to the house, and the how to use the equipment or the medical supplier. They have to gain more knowledge about this. And the next one is protection. The protection is mean the health volunteer have to protect themselves uh, from the patient, particularly for the patient who got the fever or a uh, patient who have the uh, sign and symptom of the uh, COVID-19. Next one is the cooperation. The cooperation is mean uh, they have to uh, they have to contact uh, the health. Sorry, they have to contact the family member before they go to the house. This means. Uh, they have to set appointment uh, before they go to the house and ask some information to prepare the medical supplier to look after or to care the people in the house. And the next one is cell checking. Cell checking is mean and check the job every day or check the job that they have to do for one day. It's like a, I said before about the patient name list, and then they have to check, check uh, which uh, the patient can complete uh, the nursing procedure and which patient have to do more and which patient have to uh, refer to the primary care center. And the last one is for the equipment and the health volunteer have to carry the medical supplier with them every day. This is the new normal for the every village health volunteer to do. It's like uh, they have to uh, they have to carry the mask, they have to carry the alcohol gel, and sometimes they have to prepare some PPE for the people who got the fever or the people who have the symptom of the COVID-19 particularly with the NCD patient who cannot uh, who cannot heal them uh, who cannot heal themselves to protection the health volunteer have to do this for the patient too right and the last slides we will talk about the health volunteer is the unsung heroes uh, in Thailand because their work is like a nurse, their work is like a healthcare provider in the hospital or in the primary care center, but they don't know. They just work because they are, they are willing to do this job and they work because they are one, one member of the community and they would like to 
encourage the people in the community to get the health to get healthy and they would like to work because uh, they are Buddhists and they believe with sin and good indeed if they uh, if they help some people uh, uh, from the suffering or if they take care of some people from the disease or from the disability they can make indeed in themselves uh, we believe in the heaven and hell if we have more good indeed if we go to the heaven it's something like that this is of the Thai belief and I think uh, the volunteer, the health volunteer, will be the hero. Sorry, here. Sorry. Uh, will be the hero which everyone in the world can uh, uh, give them a motivation or uh, afford them to the, the price of former. Uh, how to say uh, for uh, for the for the uh, for the famous or the publication in the in the journal or in the uh, in the presentation in the international or in the national uh, conversation or uh, conference something like that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Azantani, for the remarkable presentation. And this is a discussion session. Uh, we have uh, two questions. Uh, the first question goes to Mr. Michael. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the question is: There are uh, there are a lot of uh, people uh, without symptom. Okay. Uh, sorry. There are a lot of uh, people without symptom case. What is the main target for COVID-19 elderly patient? Who have complication? Are they susceptible 100% to COVID-19? If it is yes, what are the criteria? Okay, I think that is a very technical question about the COVID. Uh, however, uh, allow me to use the CDC protocol again because uh, the CDC suggested is to have an exclusive room uh, for a client who have a status unknown if he is a positive or negative for COVID. Uh, again, COVID is very, uh, uh, un, uh, what do you call it, sort uh, mutant. I don't know. I'm using that one because it's very uh, flexible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's borderless because you don't know uh, who will be affected. If the question is what is the criteria, I think there is only three sign symptoms uh, closely uh, related to COVID, and that is your fever, your shortness of breath, easily get tired okay however like what you mentioned that elderly are very at risk for having these uh, diseases because they already have existing complications or because of the age per se okay but if you are asking me what is specific criteria i think it it, 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 it will still go back with uh you need to test because i think testing only the patients will give you an accurate uh, data if your patient if your elderly client is positive or not because uh, COVID manifestations has a similar uh, manifestation with other diseases so testing the individuals will only give you the accurate data if they are positive or not I, I think that is the uh, uh, main key okay in identifying if, if they are positive Okay, thank you, Mr. Makal. And the second question, uh, the, last, the last question to, uh, goes to Mr. Michael and Atantoni. Uh, this question from Siti, Siti Khalifa. Uh, she, she asks, uh, what is uh, our attitude if there is any person or person who do not want to cooperate? Sorry. Right. Yes, and please. Okay. Yes, one, one. Yes, one more, one more time, please. Okay. What is our attitude if, if there is any person or practice who do not want to cooperate? 
Uh, I heard some. I heard something from the webinar. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the telephone noise or something like that. Um, uh, in in Thailand, the health volunteers uh, before they they go to be the health volunteer, uh, the health volunteer they have to ask for the uh, the willingness of the people in the community, right? That's, and then when they select them to be the health volunteer, sometimes they want to uh, they want to do the uh, the job that they, they have to be the responsibility of this. Uh, we have to consult to the primary uh, primary care for, uh, officer to resolve this, this Problem. And uh, the health care provider in the health primary care center to decide uh, how to resolve and how to encourage the people to be the health volunteers and to look after in the community. And for people who in community, if they would like to, uh, how to say, if they would not like to be uh, to be inspected by the healthcare volunteer, and we we this we have to consult to the uh, local authority officer to do this because in Thailand we have the rule and we have uh, the role by the government to inspect everyone in the community to. Uh, to be scanned or to be inspect for the sign or symptom, something like that. Okay, can I answer the question? Okay, this uh, Mr. Michael maybe. Okay, so allow me to go back with the A, B, C, and N. Okay, I think the question is, what if we have one individual, or we have. Uh, we have uh, someone who is not very cooperative or partic uh, participative, okay? So let's go back with the nursing process, okay? So let's try to identify what is the cause. Okay? So let's try to to ask or interview that individual, uh, what are the reasons why uh, he or she is hesitant to, to participate? From that information, maybe we can create, again, that, that database so that we can have uh, uh, diagnosis okay and then we can create a plan and then the intervention and following the CDC protocol like what what, what I mentioned a while ago is educating uh, everyone not only the, the residents not only the family not all, only the healthcare practitioners but all the stakeholders because once you educate those individuals this this will lead to active uh, participation right so informing them okay with your plans informing what is happening informing your 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 uh, the, the current status is very important because that information will lead that person to actively involve to whatever uh, plan that you want to to do in relation to this uh, covid okay so again uh, apply the, the nursing process try to assess and then uh, educating educating ensuring your information is also very important i think those are the factors that will help you to, to to achieve your goal in in putting everyone in the same boat. Okay, again, teamwork is very important. We are in this together. We are stronger together. Thank you to Mr. Michael and Achantani. I hope. Yes, I hope that the knowledge share may be useful for us so that we can maintain our body healthy in this new normal era. Okay, thank you. Sama-sama. Sama-sama. Ya, sukses selalu untukmu. Terima kasih, terima kasih sukses selalu juga to Mr. Michael and Atsan Tony. Okay, uh, the third presentation will be conveyed by Mr. Mandeswandika, RNPSD, uh, with the topic management of chronic illness with COVID-19 nursing care perspective in Indonesia. Hello? Okay. Okay. Uh, we can see a video before the Mr. Mada convey her, uh, sorry,
before uh, Mr. Mado convey the presentation. Please sign committee. Growing and developing together to build a country has become a great ideal that is firmly encrusted in the minds of all the nation's rising generations. Purwokerto, our beloved city, has been an inseparable part of the long history of the founding of First Land on the Equator. The beauty of nature and the noble of human culture become the exotic attraction for anyone who wants to know it. It has been a long journey for us to accompany the nation's rising generations to learn, build their characteristics, and foster their competences. We will never be tired to keep struggling to realize the noble ideals of the sovereignty of our beloved country, Indonesia. Selamat datang di Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Tempat kami belajar Mengasah kemampuan Untuk menjadi ahli Harapan Bangsa University is a transformation of Harapan Bangsa Institute of Health Sciences which was established in 2002 under the auspices of the Puspita Foundation by Mr. Haji Siarudin Ami. We are committed to carrying out the missions of implementing quality higher education and having spirit of entrepreneurship in order to create human resources who are independent, professional and cultured to conduct research and serve the community. Harapan Bangsa University has established international cooperation with colleagues in various countries such as in Australia, the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, India, and South Korea. Currently, Harapan Bangsa University has three faculties with 13 study programs. Education program at Harapan Bangsa University has been designed to enable the students to understand the disciplines which are taught and to have a bit of direct skills supported with the use of digital technology in every study program. Harapan Bangsa University provides qualified and sophisticated facilities to support the students' learning comfort, such as library, Health Sciences Laboratory Social Sciences Laboratory Technology Fast Class with Video and Audio Recorder Professional lecturers from various countries and Indonesian prestigious universities and the opportunity to get scholarship, joint study, exchange and joint agency program in many countries in the world. Harapan Bangsa University will support the development of students' interests and talents through various units of students' activities such as sports and arts. di Universitas Harapan Bangsa suasana kampus di sini dari dulu aku semester 1 sampai 6 selalu kondusif ya selalu asik kuliah sangat nyaman banget karena dosennya yang asik metode pembelajaran menarik 
buat mahasiswa tingkat akhir kayak aku pastinya rajin banget yang namanya ke perpustakaan. Tapi aku betah lama-lama di sana berjam-jam sekalipun karena aku ngerasain nyamannya fasilitas di perpustakaan itu. Wah, itu nggak berasa di perpus ya dan fasilitas yang sangat oke okay banget. Kami dari Yayasan akan berupaya semaksimal mungkin memberikan dukungan secara penuh kepada Universitas Kembangsa dalam penyediaan sarana, prasarana, sumber daya manusia, baik staf maupun dosen, agar Universitas Harapan Bangsa dapat mewujudkan visi-misinya dengan baik. Universitas Harapan Bangsa siap mewujudkan cita-cita besar untuk menjadi Center of Excellence Perguruan Tinggi dalam pengembangan IPTEX dan sumber daya manusia yang mandiri dan berbudaya. Kami terus berupaya mengantarkan anak bangsa untuk menjadi lulusan yang profesional dan memiliki semangat kewirausahaan serta mampu bersaing secara global. Harapan Bangsa University is ready to create graduates who are excellent and characterized, supported with English skills and entrepreneurship, so that they will be ready to be assigned in many strategic positions both in their work field and entrepreneurship. At Harapan Bangsa University, we create the bright future of the nation. Okay, well everyone, uh, this is a second discussion. Uh, the first uh, speaker in this session, uh, Mr. Mada. Mr. Mada? Hello, Mr. Mada? Yes, I'm here. Yes, Rahajeng, Rahajeng Siang, Mr. Mada. <laughs> Oke, okay, Rahajeng Siang, Mr. Eva. Kau yang terjadi. Ken-ken kabar ya, Mr. Mada? <laughs> apik, apik, apik. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, uh, before Mr. Mada convey his presentation, uh, uh, I would uh, I would be better for us uh, to know who he, who he is who he is uh, the following the curriculum vitae. The last uh, education from Mr. Mada, uh, PhD at Changgung University, Taiwan, a doctoral degree in specialist of chronic illness, cancer management and palliative care. The occupation uh, from Mr. Mada is lecturer of undergraduate of nursing study program at Harapan Bangsa University. Uh, Honorable Mr. Mada, please, your time is 30 minutes. Yes. Okay, Mr. Eva, thank you very much for your time. Uh, in during 30 minutes, in the next 30 minutes, I will to explain about the management of chronic illness with COVID-19. This is a nursing care perspective in Indonesia. But before to be next slide, I want to say sawadi krab for Mr. Tani. Thank you for joining with us. And also Mr. Michael, uh, if I'm not wrong, I want to say to Musta, this correct or not. Okay, and also I want to say um, uh, with the, a lot of participants, incredible participants uh, in this uh, international webinar. Um, For my outline, uh, I will to express of uh, the topic. The first is one introduction, chronic illness, uh, critical characteristics with COVID-19, and also illustration of the real condition of chronic illness during pandemic in Indonesia, nurses' contribution to many chronic illness in, with COVID-19, and providing support and reduce gap in critical knowledge of nurses, and also how to many people with compromise with chronic illness and COVID-19 in home. And the last one is conclusion. Next slide, please. Uh, if we look that table, uh, that song number about the prevalence of COVID-19 in the world, right? Um, WHO have sound that uh, about the 8 million and 700,000 they are has compromised with the COVID-19. And from that data, about the 461,000 uh, they are uh, dead already. How about the, in the West uh, country, between Africa, um, America, and Amsterdam, and Europe, uh, more higher uh, the, the, the cases of COVID-19 in America. In, in ASEAN, especially in Indonesia, uh, 
from the July uh, 9, 2020, um, they, they are confirmed about the total, total cases is 70,000. It's very high. And the total that is 3,400 and more. And uh, because what? Because related to the community transmission. If we compare with the Indonesian, Philippines, and Thailand, uh, Thailand uh, Indonesia is more higher than Philippines, and Philippines more higher than Thailand. Uh, that's, uh, I got the, the, the data from June 21, 2020. And the case of the uh, why the Thailand is more low, uh, the amount, the number of the COVID-19 because the relative due to cluster of cases transmission. Next slide, please. And how about the chronic illness prevalence cl clinical characteristic transmission with COVID-19? Uh, as we know that chronic illness care in, is an important issue that require need to pay more attention for health co worker and policy maker as an urgent priority issue the pandemic. Uh, the percentage of the COVID-19, 94% uh, patient with COVID-19 is, is older people in the worldwide. WHO have shown up uh, this data. And also in the center of disease control, also shown that 73% patient hospitalized with COVID-19 also have hypertension, about third had diabetes, and just over half had cardio uh, cardiovascular disease. Those situation was high risk to make quality, uh, bad quality of life of the patient. Next slide, please. I want to say uh, I want to show you uh, for you guys about the an example illustration of the real condition of chronic illness during pandemic in Indonesia. If 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 we have patient got DM, that that uh, that condition I I get it from the from the uh, nurses who he working in the clinical setting and also in the community. I have collect data and say some. Uh, some questionnaire and some uh, question, and I I got that experience, and I want to show and I want to show in this slide. Uh, during during pandemic, if they are get uh, diabetes and also uh, COPD, for example, who terrifying to go to in the hospital to see the doctor and also to see uh, uh, to see for medication, because um, uh, in this condition, uh, a lot of people. Uh, Clearly said to stay at home, but uh, for this condition, uh, with the chronic illness, will will become getting worse. That is uh, that is uh, more for more and more attention about this condition. And another problem is hospital is very compromised position. Uh, high risk there of being admitted in COVID nineteen. If we compare, which is what is a uh, uh, which is which one is more dangerous uh, with the first places is hospital is more dangerous than than home or uh, in the home is more uh, safety in the hospital because this condition uh, a lot of patients with chronic illness afraid to go outside to find the medication uh, next slide please um this this chronic illness condition might put the patient at increase for COVID-19. Uh, beyond of the lung, nurses, para, uh, uh, nurses or paramedics and doctor and scientists try to see might have the fast the fast starting of the COVID-19 in the in uh, in the chronic illness, and an extreme immune system response. Uh, can know the cytokine scan the med organ of mini blood have to develop of some patient. For those of chronic illness such as uh, COPD, cancer, diabetes, or and obesity, heart condition uh, of chronic, uh, for example, uh, congestive heart failure, liver disease, and lung disease, and hypertension. If they are those of the chronic illness get the infection from COVID-19, the condition will become bad will become worse 
uh, will become a uh, has some uh, fatal complication, including uh, sepsis, septic shock, pulmonary edema, severe pneumonia, and acute respiratory distress syndrome. And those conditions also will make the mortality and diet number will become increased. Next slide, please. How about the nursing perspective in chronic illness with COVID-19 in Indonesia? During the pandemic, uh, the government said um, uh, the new normal condition will will apply for another uh, for all of the um, people in Indonesia and also in the worldwide. They are uh, ready or not, they are will ready to return to work. And but in the chronic illness uh, patient, their cell they are worried. For example, uh, in ASRD patient, um, uh, regularly they are will uh, have schedule for go to uh, dialysis center, right? They are need to do some hemodialysis uh, 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 treatment and twice until three times a week. But in another problem, they are worried go to outside how to go how to uh, find the hospital. Maybe in the hospital many have uh, COVID nineteen. Because of uh, increase of the number of people go to hospital, they are find uh, some medication for uh, this condition. But uh, uh, in dialysis patient, uh, also has uh, some problem in them chronic illness. It's, it's more dangerous uh, uh, of the uh, anxiety, also uh, more dangerous of the feeling for go to hospital. That's a change mindset of the patient. And during the country economy are open, people with fundamental medical medical condition also very, very concerned. And their hope stay healthy in home and community. And while hospital bed, primary clinics, specialists, and elective surgery site were closed or full, this is another problem again with the chronic illness uh, sometimes they are feeling oh i'm i have problem in myself but in hospital is very full where i get the medication and okay i will stay in home i we didn't go anywhere because uh, uh, the government said uh, give a new, a new man and uh, suggest to stay at home but the condition in in the real they are the medication of perception of the doctor is finished. They need to find the uh, medication uh, because this uh, make a big problem to management of patient chronic illness. Um, the another thing we uh, like a nurse or uh, healthcare provider should be uh, should be thinking about the if we cannot manage this condition. Uh, the, the chronic illness condition will high risk to get complication to be acute crisis condition. I mean, uh, the first uh, chronic disease condition, if the management is not better, the condition will be in the, in the acute crisis condition. That is more dangerous. Next slide, please. And I want to say with you guys about this. This is nurses' contu contribution to many of chronic illness with COVID-19. Uh, some some people some people will will ask with us, who is the front line of healthcare professionals? If they are asked to me, I will say, nurse. Of course, nurse. Why of nurse? Because the multiple roles of function played by nurses in 24 hours. Uh, uh, beside of the patient is nurses. Yeah, uh, we, we can say a doctor, but 24 hours in the side of the patient is nurses. Nurses have multiple roles, such as a government healthcare agencies, acute care hospital, long-term care agencies have nurse also. In nursing home, like size, uh, like uh, um, Mr. Tani said, has also their nurse in there. In school, although in the community also, uh, we uh, in the a lot of front line, front line of the healthcare professional we are having there, and you should be uh, approach 
of you guys because um, nurses uh, before the pandemic they are there are uh, many people blind didn't see how important it's yours how important the nurse in the hospital but now the positive impact of the pan this pandemic a lot of people see uh, what is important a nurse profession in the hospital or also in the community uh, they are will um, they are will give uh, give a regard for you and a positive a positive uh, positive response uh, because you, you help many people during this pandemic and particularly important during this covid pandemic make make the nurse uh, should be in improve the our knowledge i want to say about the next slide about the why we need um, uh, increase our knowledge and about nurses contribution to many chronic illness after i got the 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 questionnaire and i asked some nurse in the clinical setting and community i divided uh, nurses contribution become five the first one is providing health education screening service and support of the general public for individual in the high risk category and the second one how to make nurse to manage infection prevent, uh, prevention and surveillance and the third one is uh, implementing appropriate preparation when precaution of nursing home and, and a long-term care setting this is a third one and the next uh, the next contribution is the protective protection of patient with immune deficit or underlying disease as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease chronic illness and cancer as specially and the last one is providing care to patients with covid-19 who are in the acute or critical condition if if i can uh, say in the um, if i can say in the this patient for uh for uh, the providing care patient with COVID-19 who are in the acute or clinical condition is uh, COVID-19 may in induce several pneumonia, right? And then even lead to mortality if for a group with the higher risk group, including all the adults. Um, Mr. Mr. Michael also in the in the older people they are will uh, easy to getting the COVID-19 and easy to become bad the condition and. Uh, Although uh, although they are uh, uh, have good immune system, but because the older will have uh, the condition easy for that it uh, infection or transmission infection, and another another immune system or weakness weakness of immune system such as uh, HIV patient, they are also have high risk for get it to. Uh, infection transmission of COVID-19 and who are infected by symptom asymptomatic and symptomatic particularly for those with several conditions uh, those uh, some uh, divided the categories five the categories what the nurses contribution to many chronic illness with COVID-19 if uh, this condition of uh, a lot of the participant in here is nurse you should be considered about these uh, categories because these categories will, will make you uh, be, make you have standard have, uh, make you have uh, how to manage about the chronic illness in the uh, new normal next slide please in this slide i will to say about the providing support to reduce gap in the critical knowledge uh, uh, i call that slide is nurses are human also the meaning is uh, as COVID-19 annually identify disease effective vaccine and treatment are still development sometimes uh, sometime, uh, for example China said oh China has a uh, development about the vaccine but until now still uh, didn't didn't deliver yet right and also another uh, for example Taiwan Taiwan also said uh, we we have a good uh, to protect uh, to protect country for infection. Yeah, the WHO said that one is more safety with another country. Uh, they are said uh, uh, Taiwan has some uh, uh, some pro standard procedure for for protect 
the our people in Taiwan and in in good news Taiwan is more safe in another country but for the vaccine and treatment still in development and I call that nurses are human also because uh, Turkey is newly identified infection disease nurses face a potential risk of infection as well potential work related anxiety the meaning is uh, nurses human also in the another part of nursing they are also so they are worried about the uh, about the condition how to manage uh, our style and how to can help the other people but how to manage ourselves or didn't get the infection for COVID-19 and another another nursing perception is uh, they are also have family they cannot to meet our family during their uh, in the duty for do our job and also they are uh, they are have anxiety and depression something like that but i want to say with your guys uh, between anxiety and mental health problem in yourself as a nurse you you should be make they are become the craze don't forget with with your job description in the hospital anxiety you should be managed you should be uh, uh, looks like uh, more more calm down than the other people. You still, uh, I think, because the pre uh, personal protective equipment is very good now. I think we will uh, we will uh, avoid for to that. It's an important to apply the latest knowledge to protect healthcare professional, nursing staff who carry in the patient COVID nineteen is also more important thing we, we should be do. You up to grade your knowledge. Every many time you uh you you don't lazy to read something and don't and don't lazy to find some information about the COVID uh, nineteen uh, in the new normal. How to manage how to manage uh the con that condition. Healthcare provide must be educated about the dangers. Nurse also the first thing I said in the previously slide a nurse in the front line of the health care provider professional you should be educated about yourself because in your new normal maybe some different role how to make the dangerous uh, condition of the patient COVID-19 uh, how to how to manage uh, about the COVID-19 with chronic illness uh, in the community and also in the uh, nursing home and hospital uh, how to manage the uh, relative environment measurement and hygiene practice, something like that. Next slide, please. In this slide, uh, I want to say policies and strategy to prevent staffing short sorry, in nursing perspective. I call that uh, slide is we are work together. Don't worry, uh, uh, I say with the, a lot of nurse in here, we not working alone, we are working with another profession. For example, policy for government, healthcare, such as doctor, pharmacist, laboratory, and another professionalism in the, uh, in the hospital. And nursing administration system might help prevent the rapid spread of COVID-19 through measures including infection control education, protective equipment uses, and also isolating patients have been infected from the non-infected population. For this uh, slide, I want to um, make highlights uh, the function. You, uh, like a nurse, you should be manic our 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 knowledge, which one uh, how to uh, way. What what is way for go to hospital? That's some people not have infection, and that some people have infection. You should be uh, considered about this. I think uh, a lot of. Um, standard operating procedure in Indonesia in the big hospital they are have uh, they are have some uh, some uh, management a good management for ourselves for for our services I mean and nursing administration and clinical also play important role developing and promoting effective anti-infection protective and treatment and strategies next slide please For this slide, 
I, I want to say about the how too many people with compromise has chronic illness and uh, the new issues in the worldwide. Uh, for example, in the US and also in the U West, West country and ASEAN. If I, if I can say that people who are living with chronic illness should not stop taking any medication. You understand what I mean? I mean, they are have chronic illness they are cannot stop the medication uh, that suppress their chronic illness. If they are uh, they are stopped suddenly, that can make make the condition with more more worse of, of the patient. Many many patients die because they are worried go to outside and find the medication because uh, they are think uh, they are thinking about the if I go outside the COVID nineteen will will suddenly to uh, have in my body and and will faster for die but another another condition if they are didn't getting of medicine or continue the medicine there is more easy than they are getting the COVID-19 this uh this is the real condition in Indonesia they are heart rate heart rates associated with suddenly stopping medication for for US said um uh, US uh have standard they are uh, have new is to use telemedicine. What is telemedicine uh, 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 in the in the minutes of the chronic illness? But I uh, I asked with my friend in Indonesia. Uh, a lot of hospital use tele uh, use the telemedicine uh, to support about the uh, about the services in hospital. Yeah, uh, they said. Maybe in the big hospital, they are have this, uh, they have this instrument. But in the small hospital, in the small town, they are, we didn't use it. Uh, that's my uh, uh, that's condition. I will to say with you guys uh, in Indonesia, we have a a lot of uh, island in the in Indonesia, and uh, although uh, we have also the center of town, and they are uh, complete of the services. Uh, instrument to support our COVID-19 and stop on refilling practice medication check we uh, uh, another part I want to say if you have compromised with chronic illness stop up on refill of prescription medication check with your provider to deliver and pick up option and so you have at least two weeks supply in case how to break the leaf humble this, the meaning is, if if you have this condition, you you can uh, refill of prescription of medication from the doctor, uh, maybe two weeks or one month uh, to 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 combine uh, or to keep our our stockies and stockies in up in the home. Next slide, please. And the, another one is take the prescription in your condition exactly to prescribe if you have uncertain check with your doctor and nurse. Make sure vaccination up to date. I mean, uh, uh, many times you should be watching the Facebook or in the news, in the uh, newspaper, what the vaccine up to date. But until now, I can say with you guys, uh, until now the vaccine is still in the develop. And taking with your doctor and nurse about the concern you have to make a care plan in the event you get sick. If you are have emergency warning sign, such as unresponsiveness, difficulty breathing, severe chest pain and pressure, and like headache, extreme disorientation, physical emergency service, please call emergency services. Protect your emotional by uh, reduce the anxiety and fear. Next place, please. This is uh, this is slide uh, maybe same with uh, another speaker, uh, Ms. Mr. Michael and Mr. Tani. They have said during new normal, if if more better you stay home, please stay at home. But a new normal, uh, we cannot stop. You need to go to work and you need to do something for your life. Uh, and for more consider for this condition, still uh, look at maintenance distance. Minimum is six feet or one more half meter if you're able to donate your blood please donate blood and plasma 
because this uh, will help the, another chronic illness uh, forget uh, some better condition. And before and uh, after do something, please clean your hand and reduce panic, panic buying a food. And also personal protective equipment also in your SAP should be mindset in your in your mindset uh, should be used mess for example um, in Taiwan now I'm in Taiwan uh, I want to say um, during the pandemic um, uh, during the pandemic in Taiwan uh, have decreased right but if they are go to the bus if they are go to the general transportation still use uh, should be used mess uh, should be used, uh, uh, they are give the uh, hand sanitizer such as uh, uh, alcohol 7, 70% and they are give us uh, annoyment or uh, said should be used uh, mask if you ca didn't bring uh, the mask you cannot to, uh, go to uh, general transportation. Next slide please. Um, I will uh, say about the uh, new 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 issue of the telemedicine nurses, doctor, pharma pharmacists, and etc. Patient and family can communicate with the uh, this uh, condition. Maybe in the worldwide, uh, a lot of people have Android, but not all has uh, internet connection very well. Um, but in the chronic illness, I suggest and I give advice of this condition, you should be use telemedicine. Some, some hospital maybe has these services. You can ask uh, in the hospital, maybe have a consultation about the uh, use the telemedicine application on something like that. Next slide, please. Uh, telemedicine is when you uh, use in many scenarios during COVID-19. A patient with my respiratory symptom need evaluation, for example, but has told to not go to the emergency room. The, the another scenario is maybe a, a patient has no symptom or asymptomatic of COVID-19, but had contact with someone infected by novel coronavirus uh, can to be evaluated. You can use telemedicine for this condition. Uh, another condition is a patient need care for an unrelated reason, for example, management of chronic health condition, but cannot go in person to do clinic closer, you can use telemedicine. Maybe if the patient cannot use telemedicine directly because of they are very old, the family members should be helped or caregivers should be helped uh, of the patient for can do that and said about the condition, uh, 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 about the cost condition progress of the patient with the doctor or nurse. And the another scenario is a provider has been quarantined due to COVID-19, but can continue to see patient from their home via virtual visit. Sometimes a uh, patient uh, currently in the hospital, but they are miss, uh, missing of the family. We, uh, they are used, yeah, video call for call the, our family member. And another one is Patient with several symptoms of COVID-19 is hospitalized and need to specialist consult with an infection disease and doctor and remote control. You can use telemedicine for do that. It's more uh, low risk uh, of the chronic illness patient and also more low risk to get uh, infection from COVID-19 in the outside. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is uh, the last one of my slides. Is I can uh, give conclusion of this uh, international webinar. Um, as you, as I said in the previous start my slide, nurses are key member of healthcare team, team to control and prevent the spread of infectious disease. Right, you should be a proud of you of yourself because you in the in the world they are will consider about what is your now what is your function in hospital and what is your function for uh health person in the in the worldwide during covid 19 you should be um, 
confident about confidence about yourself and always try to uh, find uh, another another information and uh, increase your knowledge uh, how to manage this uh, condition. However, nurses work in the front line, providing direct care in the individual infected with COVID-19 and future effort, if necessary, to develop strategy recommendation for integrate new knowledge. For example, you join the webinar, uh, the, you join uh, some information how to manage uh, that condition, not only in the chronic illness, such as maybe another condition such as a crisis uh, condition, or uh, older patient, or also in the minutes of the child and in the maternity, and and also sometimes in the psychiatric uh, specialists, right? And management behavior in order to max maximize quality of life in the positive health outcome. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. This is maybe uh, our information and nursing perspective of uh, in Indonesia. We have uh, a lot of nursing in Indonesia. Maybe in the Thailand and and Philippines also have uh, a lot of nurses. But we are uh, we are same profession. And I want to I want to say with uh, I I want to say with you guys. I'm very proud of my staff become nurse in the worldwide. Thank you very much. The time I will return to Mr. Reva. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Mr. Made for uh, the valuable presentation. Uh, <laughs> it's really interesting. Uh, I would like to remind, uh, remind all participants again, for those who want to ask something to our speaker, you can give uh, your question, share link by committee. Okay, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, the last presentation, uh, which will con convey by Mrs. Dwi Novita Sari, Eskapnas MSC. The topic of uh, her presentation is New COVID-19 Crisis uh, Rising Domestic Abuse. Ms. Novi? Hello, Mr. Reva. Okay, what are you doing, Ms. Novi? I'm good. How are okay. you? Yeah, before Ms. Novi start, uh, let me read her curriculum vitae. Uh, the last education from uh, Ms. Mrs. No Mrs. Twin of uh, was a Master of Basic Medicine and Biomedical Biochemistry major, major uh, Gajah Mada University, and the occupation as Dean of Heart Faculty, Harapan Bangsa University. Uh, Mrs. Novi, your time is 20 minutes. Time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reva, for giving me a chance to deliver my presentation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for Achantani, Mr. Michael, and Mr. Mother for the remarkable presentation. And I also really appreciate all the participants from Indonesia and abroad. Here I'm going to explain about a new, a new COVID-19 crisis, rising domestic abuse. My presentation will be divided into uh, five parts. The first about overview, second increasing report of domestic abuse, during the COVID-19 pandemic, and then the third, uh, domestic abuse, and four type of domestic abuse, and the last, we talk about community collaboration. Without any further ado, let's start the presentation. Um, as we know that COVID-19, or the new strain of coronavirus, has been declared a global pandemic. Almost all countries in the world reported case of COVID-19. People's life drastically changed day by day. Thus, we need to stop. We need to stop the spread of COVID-19. Some of the ways that suggested by government are staying at home, doing physical distancing, mandating school and business closure, and restricted travel. 
Unfortunately, all those actions do not guarantee that people will be safe. However, there are unintended negative consequences. Slide, please. One of consequences is domestic abuse. Many domestic abuse happen. For example, child abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, and psychological abuse. The victim may currently be facing a worst case scenario. A worst case scenario means finding themselves trapped at home with a violent abuser during this pandemic. Moreover, there is no contact with people outside. So, they can ask for help. Right. Risk factor for domestic abuse during the COVID-19 pandemic such as unemployment because there are many company collapse, income reduce, limited resources, and limited social support. Those are the possible factors that uh, may increase the suffering of the victims. The condition become worse because there is an increase of the use of alcohol. Those usually drink alcohol in the bar because of this pandemic, they drink alcohol at home. This, of course, will influence the psychological of the other family member. Slide. And now I will talk about increasing report of domestic abuse during the COVID-19 pandemic. In China, domestic abuse is reported to have triple higher than before the pandemic while they were staying at home. Additionally, France has indicated a 30% increase in domestic report abuse. In Brazil, it was estimated that the domestic abuse report has jumped for about 40 until 50%. And Italy has also indicated reports of domestic abuse rose significantly. Slide. Uh, the other countries, in one region of Spain, the government claimed that call to its headline had risen by 20% in the first few days of the confinement period. And in UK, it increased by 25% in the seven days following the announcement of social distancing and lockdown by the government. So, uh, how about in Indonesia? Slide. This is uh, based on National Commission on Violence Against Women. In Bahasa Komnas Perempuan, groups that are at risk a domestic violence in Indonesia are a woman 31 until 40 years old, married status, income less, uh, income of less than 5 million rupiahs, have three or more children, and live uh, in a province with high COVID-19 crisis. Next. A press release from the Indonesian Women Association for Justice Legal Aids Institute in Bahasa we know uh, LBH APIC on April 21st, 2020. It is stated that there were 97 cases of violence against women. The highest number of complaints was found at home as many as 33 cases, right? So, what is domestic abuse? Domestic abuse is referred to form of maltreatment 
by someone who has a special relationship, such as spouse, husband, wife, sibling, child, friend, or caregiver. Domestic abuse treat the family member in the form of physical, sexual, psychological, or economic abuse. It may also involve child abuse and intimate partner violence. Next. Now we will discuss about physical abuse. Physical abuse means at least one act of physical violence. So, when there is a child being beaten by their parent, although it's only one, it belongs to physical abuse. Next. As I said before, one of the form of physical abuse is direct beating and the other form are hitting or punching, slapping, cutting, burning, sacking, kicking, pinching, force feeding, and then unreasonable physical restraint, maltreatment of medical condition, sexual assault, and prolonged lack of water or food. Next. And now I will talk about sign of physical abuse. People who have got physical abuse usually show this sign. Bruises, broken bones, sprain or dislocation, report of drug abuse or apparent failure to take medication regularly and then uh, broken eyeglasses or frame, sign of being restrained, such as rock mark on wrist, can differ refusal, uh, sorry, can differ refusal to allow you, to allow us to see the victim alone. Right? And the other sign of physical abuse are Prior states of healing, burn, pattern injuries, fatty high loss, frequent visit to ER, and then black eyes, wear, laceration, open wound, cut and puncture, and internal injuries or pain. Slide. Some of the victims may also show this sign poor skin condition, poor hygiene, hemorrhaging below skull, dehydration or malnutrition without illness, loss of weight, soil clotting, and delay in seeking medical treatment for injuries. Right. This is the other form of domestic abuse, is sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is unwanted sexual contact, including touching unwanted, even in not sensitive part, sexual assault or rape, sodomy, coarse nudity, and sexually explicit photographing. Sign of sexual abuse are um, sign bruises around breast or genital, unexplained genital infection or disease, unexplained vagina or anal bleeding, uh, stain on bloody bloody undercoating, and then sexually transmitted disease. This condition, I'm sorry, please uh, back the slide take the slide please okay this condition uh, difficult to be assessed because sometimes the victim are ashamed 
the victim are ashamed to tell the truth what happened to her what happened to him slide please the third form of the domestic abuse is psychological or emotional abuse it's usually defined as an act carried out with the intention of causing emotional pain or distress psychological abuse is often accompanied by physical abuse emotional abuser can use verbal and non-verbal to inflict the victim right the example of verbal form of emotional abuse are intimidation through yelling or treats name calling harsh order humiliation and ridicule and habitual blaming and the example of non-verbal form of emotional abuse are ignoring isolating from friend or activities terrorizing and forbid visitors right the sign of psychological abuse are withdrawn behavior wasting or failure to treat depression agitation uh, non-communicative non-responsive and then inadequate clothing or fecal and urine smell face and sores malnutrition or dehydration and untreated medical condition right the other sign of psychological abuse are anxiety with the level mind to suffer depression hopelessness talk to suicide confusion or disorientation trembling and a uh, lack of eye contact because psychological abuse is usually associated with physical abuse so the sign the sign are almost the same as physical abuse next now uh, where to ask for help after you join this webinar if you get if you get domestic abuse or if you find something leads to domestic abuse you must report it to community service center such as rob and abuse hotline crisis centers private counselors nearest health practitioner or local police right and then to decrease the case of domestic abuse we need to improve the collaboration from community many postman garbage collector food delivery staff and home repair agent are still turning around us during the global crisis they may still have opportunity to detect violence at home and report their finding to the proper authorities uh, such as police security especially in indonesia we can we can report to in bahasa ketua rt the reality is we were hardly winning we were hardly winning to fight to stop domestic abuse Com community must ensure citizens uh, are aware aware of the current increase risk of domestic abuse at this time encourage them to check on their neighbor friend and family while maintaining adherence to any distancing regulation and report any concern they see or hear to the proper authorities next this is the last my slide 
uh, I suggest to you solve domestic abuse. If we ignore domestic abuse to be happen around us because sometimes we think that it is their personal business, it, it never ends. We must be brave and care with our community. Risk of domestic abuse is not dramatically rising and it will likely remain that way for the upcoming month. Uh, if you see or hear something leading to domestic abuse, please report it. I tell you that domestic abuse is crime and the call you make may save a life. That's all my presentation. Thank you very much for the attention. I give the time back to Mr. Reva. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks to Mrs. Dwi Novita Sari. Okay, the next session is uh, question and discussion. Uh, we have uh, two questions. The question, the first question goes to Mr. Made. Mr. Made. Hello, Mr. Made. Because the host uh, unmute my my this uh, from the center, I cannot do open. Okay, 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 Mr. Mr. Made, you have uh, a question. Uh, yes. The question is: Can the COVID nineteen patient be cured by means of a lot? Uh, sorry, uh, by means of a blood plasma donor from the patient who has recovered from uh, COVID nineteen. On. Um, no, no, uh, I cannot to answer. Uh, I cannot to answer about this. But, uh, but the that condition, of course, they are cannot to uh, uh, recur about the uh, after they are have COVID nineteen and they are give the do, uh, give the donor to the another patient uh, and make 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 uh, some looks like medication of the patient in COVID nineteen. That's is is wrong, wrong thinking about this. I think they are will cannot help uh, after uh, pass pass pass. They are have COVID nineteen and uh, become good, and they are will donate uh, plasma to other COVID nineteen. This is is not uh, uh, is not uh, good. Uh, is not better answer. And uh, although they are uh, uh, they are. Uh, uh, the condition become better. They are still need twenty eight or one month, one month uh, day or uh, uh, waiting for recheck in the blood. They are have co uh, COVID nineteen or, or not, and make sure uh, the blood is clean and can uh, to donate with other people something like that. And uh, I answer that question is. Cannot, cannot to recall about this. Thank you, Mr. Reva. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Mada. And the second question goes to Ms. Mofi. It is a simple, simple question. Uh, how to prevent habitually blaming? Hello, okay, Ms. Mofi. Okay. Uh. How to, how to prevent habitually yes. blaming? Can you repeat the question, Mr. Eva? Okay. Uh, the question is how to prevent prevent habitually habitual blaming. Okay. Uh, I try to answer. Uh, yes. Habitual blaming can make other people hurt. Uh, that people must uh, apa? Boleh saya baca jawaban saya pakai bahasa, Mr. Eva? Okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, habitual blaming dapat me menyebabkan orang lain terluka hatinya, sehingga kita perlu memberikan uh, mengkaji. 
kalau saya melakukan itu, kalau orang lain melakukan itu, uh, kita kaji aspek positif orang yang melakukan habitual blaming, bahwa dia berharga. She is or he has a value. So, jadi dia tidak akan melukai orang lain. Jadi ketika dia menghargai dirinya sendiri, dia juga akan menghargai orang lain. Jadi, uh, she can respect the other. I think uh, that's my uh, answer, Mr. Reva. Okay, thank you, uh, Mrs. Novi uh, and Mr. Made for the interesting and fruitful information shared to us. Uh, so that we have to keep our spirit in learning. Also, we are in this uh, disruptive condition. Okay, well, everyone, uh, to make us more spiritful, Harapan Bangsa University give uh, give you a quiz uh, with many interesting phrases. So, uh, without any further, please welcome Mr. Barlian Pistanto, SPDM Hum, the head of International Affairs and Marketing Office of Harapan Bangsa University to lead the quiz. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Reva. Thank you yes. for the chance and the time. Okay. Okay, baik. Thank you for our special guest, Mr. Tani, Mr. Melvin, and Mr. Michael. Well, it's glad for us. It means a lot here in the in this webinar, and also the other uh, international and also national participants. Well, allow me to lead the quiz for the participants, and it'll take a few minutes. Okay, saatnya quiz time. Ya, yeah, quiz ini diselenggarakan. Uh, Disponsori oleh Universitas Harapan Bangsa dan Yayasan Pendidikan Dwi Pusita Dan sangat mudah caranya Yang paling penting adalah follow akun Instagram Universitas Harapan Bangsa Dan jangan lupa subscribe, like, uh, postingan atau tayangan webinar ini pada channel Youtube Universitas Harapan Bangsa Baik, next slide Oke, okay. berikut cara menjawabnya anda semua mendapatkan kesempatan untuk memenangkan hadiah ratusan ribu rupiah dengan mencari cara yang pertama follow up dengan Instagram Bangsa Harapan Bangsa dan subscribe layanan webinar ini pada YouTube channel Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Kemudian ketik jawaban Anda pada kolom komentar postingan layar webinar ini dengan format nama, asal institusi atau instansi, kemudian juga sebutkan wilayah serta jawaban Anda. Yang terakhir, jawaban Anda ditunggu hingga hari ini saja sampai dengan tengah malam nanti. Oke, okay, sudah siap? Baik. Pertanyaannya sangat mudah. Silakan next selanjutnya. Oke, okay, pengumuman pemenangnya akan diumumkan melalui postingan di akun Instagram @universitasharapanbangsa. Jadi, jangan lupa pantengin terus postingan akun Instagram Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Oke, okay, berikutnya Pertanyaan yang pertama adalah sebutkan nama asal institusi pembicara luar negeri. Yang kedua, sebutkan alamat kampus Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Dan yang terakhir, tuliskan pendapat Anda tentang webinar ini dengan satu kata saja. Oke, jangan lupa follow akun Instagram Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Jawab pertanyaan-pertanyaan tersebut -pertanyaan dalam kolom postingan atau Instagram Universitas Harapan Bangsa untuk webinar ini. Sebagai informasi buat Anda semua, bahwasanya Universitas Harapan Bangsa masih membuka kesempatan untuk mereka yang ingin melanjutkan kuliah di gelombang 4 ini. Dan juga Universitas Harapan Bangsa sudah membuka kelas paralel atau bagi kalian yang masih kerja dan ingin lanjut kuliah, masih ada kesempatan ya untuk meraih masa depan yang lebih cerah. Oke, okay, Universitas Harapan Bangsa saat ini sudah ada tiga fakultas, diantaranya Fakultas Ilmu Kesehatan, Fakultas Ilmu Sosial, dan Fakultas Sains Teknologi. Ada 13 program studi yang bisa Anda pilih dan nantikan kesempatan yang luar biasa bersama kami Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Yang lewatkan sampai dengan akhir September ini untuk penerimaan mahasiswa baru tahun ajaran 2020-2021. Sekali lagi saya ingatkan jawab pertanyaan kuis tadi pada kolom komentar postingan webinar ini 
di akun Instagram Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Serta jangan lupa juga like, subscribe tayangan webinar ini pada channel YouTube Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Saya terima kasih, pamit undur diri, selamat melanjutkan webinar ini. Thank you, Mr. Lian. Udi Aksita, Harapan Bangsa. Kuliah mudah bikin masa depanmu makin cerah. Kuliah di UHB yuk. Gelombang 4, pendaftaran mahasiswa baru Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Dapatkan beragam kesempatan untuk kamu yang mendaftar di gelombang ini seperti bebas tes tulis masuk, potongan biaya kuliah Rp2.500.000, bebas pilih prodi yang kamu mau, buruan daftar sekarang juga, serta beberapa program unggulan Universitas Harapan Bangsa seperti magang ke Jepang khusus untuk prodi keperawatan dan kebidanan, pertukaran mahasiswa ke Korea Selatan, Pertukaran mahasiswa ke Thailand. Kuliah di UHB yuk, daftar mudah dan bisa dari rumah. Klik aja pmb.uhb.ac.id. Info lebih jelasnya hubungi nomor berikut ya. Universitas Harapan. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Now for presentation uh, have been conveyed successfully. Uh, without any obstacle here i would to uh, i would like to suggest you uh, not to forget to keep our safety by wearing personal protection oh, sorry uh, by wearing personal protective equipment and maintain hand hygiene and social distancing uh, i would like to express my gratitude to all presenter who have shared their knowledge to all of us Hopefully, it can increase our insight and be useful for all. Before the webinar ends, I want to remind all to the participant to fill the evaluation form set by the committee in chat room, live streaming, and uh, and Telegram. Finally, uh, let's close this webinar by saying Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, whom we respect, uh, we would like to thank you for participate, participate and sparing your time to join this webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tumbuh dan berkembang bersama membangun negeri telah menjadi cita-cita besar yang tertanam kuat di benak seluruh anak bangsa. Purwokerto, kota kami tercinta ini telah menjadi bagian tak terpisahkan dari sejarah panjang berdirinya negeri subur di garis katulistiwa. Indahnya alam serta luhurnya budaya Banyumas menjadi daya tarik yang eksotis bagi siapapun yang ingin mengenalnya. Panjang sudah perjalanan kami karakter dan mengasah kompetensi. Kami tidak akan pernah lelah untuk terus berjuang dan bertransformasi dalam mewujudkan cita-cita luhur berdaulatnya negara kita tercinta, Indonesia. Selamat datang di Universitas Harapan Bangsa. Tempat kami belajar. Mengasah kemampuan. Menjadi ahli Di bidang yang kami tekuni Universitas Harapan Bangsa atau UHB Merupakan sebuah transformasi dari stikes harapan bangsa Yang didirikan pada tahun 2002 Di bawah naungan Yayasan Pendidikan Dwi Puspita oleh Bapak Haji Syahrudin Amin. Kami berkomitmen untuk menjalankan misi penyelenggaraan pendidikan tinggi berkualitas serta memiliki semangat kewirausahaan dalam rangka membangun SDM mandiri, profesional, dan berbudaya, menyelenggarakan penelitian, serta mengabdi kepada masyarakat. 
UHB telah menjalin kerjasama internasional dengan perguruan tinggi di berbagai negara seperti Australia, Filipina, Thailand, Malaysia, dan India. UHB saat ini memiliki tiga fakultas dengan 14 bidang studi. Pendidikan di UHB telah dirancang agar mahasiswa dapat memperoleh pemahaman dari disiplin ilmu yang diajarkan, serta memiliki keterampilan praktik yang aplikatif dengan didukung penggunaan teknologi digital di setiap program studi yang ada. UHB menyediakan fasilitas yang sangat mumpuni untuk mendukung kenyamanan belajar mahasiswa, seperti perpustakaan, Laboratorium komputer Laboratorium ilmu kesehatan Laboratorium ilmu sosial Ruang belajar berbasis teknologi dengan video dan audio recorder Profesional dari berbagai negara dan universitas besar Indonesia Serta kesempatan luas untuk mendapatkan beasiswa dan pertukaran pelajar ke berbagai negara di seluruh dunia UHB mendukung penuh pengembangan minat dan bakat mahasiswa Melalui berbagai unit kegiatan mahasiswa seperti olahraga Seni di Universitas Harapan Bangsa suasana kampus di sini dari dulu aku semester 1 sampai 6 selalu kondusif ya, selalu asik kuliah sangat nyaman banget karena dosennya yang asik metode pembelajar menarik buat mahasiswa tingkat akhir kayak aku pastinya rajin banget yang namanya ke perpustakaan tapi aku betah lama-lama di sana berjam-jam sekalipun karena aku ngerasain nyamannya fasilitas di perpustakaan itu wah itu nggak berasa di perpus ya dan fasilitas yang sangat Oke banget. Kami dari Yayasan akan berupaya semaksimal mungkin memberikan dukungan secara penuh kepada Universitas Harapan Bangsa dalam penyediaan sarana, prasarana, sumber daya manusia baik staf maupun dosen agar Universitas Harapan Bangsa dapat mewujudkan visi misinya di Universitas Harapan Bangsa siap mewujudkan cita-cita untuk menjadi center of excellence perguruan tinggi dalam pengembangan IPTEX dan sumber daya manusia yang mandiri dan berbudaya. Kami terus berupaya mengantarkan anak bangsa untuk menjadi lulusan yang profesional dan memiliki semangat kewirausahaan serta mampu bersaing secara global. UHB siap mencetak lulusan unggul dan berkarakter yang didukung dengan kemampuan bahasa Inggris serta jiwa kewirausahaan sehingga siap ditempatkan di berbagai posisi strategis baik dalam bidang pekerjaan maupun wirausaha. Bersama UHB, kita songsong masa depan bangsa yang cemerlang.